Okay, today I have a tracked on TV. I think this might have been an Australian brand, something like Princess, but I could be wrong about that. What do we got? A DCP 061, 5.5 inch color power system. And I suspect this is another day we made one. It looks basically very similar to the hospital television I looked at a while back. But these should actually have all the AVs and stuff connected. Possibly a little bit different. But I do have that other TV here, so I'll have a look at the two of them side by side and see. As you can see, they look pretty similar. This one's had the tuning taken out. Well, it does have um, push button tuning as Y, so it's probably just a slightly later model. Other than that, looks pretty much identical. And the other one's a remote, of course, a hospital one, it would have to be remote. Obviously no antenna on there, they blocked that off. This one's still got a telescopic antenna. The other end, both got the headphone socket. Headphone socket in the same spot, obviously that's got a key switch added. Both got degaussing in the same spot. And I guess the only other thing is underneath what they look like. Same sort of vent slots, they definitely are the same factory. That was a C1501. Even the label, yeah, same little diagonal corner. Certainly looks like it came out of the same place, so they should be both Daewoo's. I've actually got another one of these as well, so I've got two of the things. Don't like the look at all that brown stuff there. But at least at hospital TV, I know what it's good for parts for, if nothing else. It's something rattling in there. I think this one is meant to just at least turn on, but not really do much beyond that. There's the power sock cord going over there. Okay, I'll try plugging it in. Let's see what it does. So we've got a flashing light there. Ooh, that's making a weird sound. A little bit of a flicker on the screen. Which is a bit diggy, I think. Some weird dots on the screen. Oh, what on earth is going on there? Or oh, why that's flashing, you'd think it would. Ooh, what was that? A bit of a flash. Yeah, a bit of a flash when I turn it on. So, not doing a lot. Is that something to do with the automatic fine tuning, that flashing light? No. I do have another one of these as well, which is supposedly working, but I don't think I've ever got around to actually plugging it in and trying it. So I assume that's the same model again, a DCP61. Yeah, A61. Let's see if this thing does anything. Still got a flashing LED, no sound. Yeah, I don't know if this one, I thought this one was meant to work, but I'm starting to wonder if it does. <laughs> monitor, turn monitor mode off, that should help. Well, I'm not seeing a raster, unless this thing mutes or something, which it shouldn't do, I wouldn't think. Monitor TV switch isn't the best. No, we've got no... So no image whatsoever by the look of it. Oh no, it is there. Oh yeah, well it's coming up now, it wasn't there a minute ago. So we've got another dicky switch, maybe. Bit purple, but at least we've got a raster on this one. Very purple, in fact. And it's not very bright. Well, not overly bright, anyway. So that's probably a working one, although it was a bit reluctant to get going. Hmm, weird. Oh, well. I guess it's worth a quick look inside and see what's going on. 
Let's have a look at that. First one I looked at. I forget how these came apart now, but I think it's just these screws on the side, isn't it? I think this top bit pulls off. That may have to come off. Ugh, it doesn't want to, though. Jeez, that is tight as. I'm sure that's going to have to come off. Ooh, jeez, that's not good. I hope I didn't break something. No, it's just uh, maybe broke the knob a little bit or bent it. Uh, some mongrels glued it on is why. That's full of um, super glue or something. Well, look, unless it was done in the factory like that, it's possible, I guess. But also just as likely that someone has broken it before and done a dodgy on it. Or maybe they broke it trying to repair it. So I guess I should have really prize that from both sides. Would have been a bit better. Hmm, can't get that power socket loose. Not sure if I have to. It may have a nut on the back of it or something, but I feel like that. If I can, something's coming apart. Uh, catching on the socket board. Yeah, there's a whole power transformer or something lifting off with it, I think. This antenna socket comes off. Do I need to undo this? I'm just going to get a nut fold in inside, yeah, sure enough. So I don't think I did need to undo that. Well, this, of course, the other one didn't have a power supply in anymore. So I have no idea how this is actually set up. Maybe all the knobs, the AV sockets and stuff come up with this. Just going to be super careful with the picture tube in these things. And, oh, I've got a degaussing thing in the way too, haven't we? What does that do? Oh yeah, power transformer attached. Looks like, not sure what these sockets, whether they go with it or need to slide off. And then, well, being very careful with the tube, especially with this heavy thing on here, heavy power transformer, we need to try and release whatever holds this on. There we go. Ooh. Do not like this at all. Oh, well, at least we can see what's in there. So yeah, that does drop off. That can sort of come off, but it's still attached to the uh, inbuilt telescopic antenna. And there's the power supply that was missing out of the other one. Maybe we'll unplug that. What do we got here? Power switch. What is this? This is a horrible white wire here. It's the main culprit. Holding everything together, I think. And then this yellow... Is that the degaussing switch or something? Probably is. If we can get that out of there, it's got glue on it, of course. Horrible brown glue that they like to use. Do I need to press on that or is it. Uh, get the glue off it? Yeah, I think that should just pull out. Again, being careful because it'll shoot up and you don't want to hit the tube. Uh, it's bringing the whole base with it, I think. This is something I need to release. What's on the other side? Of course, they put it where you can't get access to anything. No, it doesn't seem to be anything holding it. I think it's just a press fit type. Yeah, it's just the glue. I poke a screwdriver underneath there, it seems to be rising. There we go. Well, that's made life harder than it needed to be. 
Yeah, I don't think this thing's going to be much fun to work on. Let's just at least get this stuff loosened up a bit. Uh, so they put the telescopic antenna part through this back panel, but we can... I think if I unscrew the socket, because there's no way of getting that back off easily without disconnecting it at the antenna end. But if I undo the socket off the panel, assuming it comes off, yeah, that solves that issue, so that gets that out of the way. It was one of the main hassles. I don't know what this white wire does or if we need it in there. Yeah, not a great thing to work on. Looks like the silver fish have been busy in this one, eating the label off the tube. Yeah, that's got all sorts of wires. Oh, is that all corroded? What on earth? Yeah, it's all rusted. There was a spring there. Oh, it's actually corroded. Oh, God. I wonder if this thing's been on a boat or something. That is a risk you take with these things. Because <sighs> it's got quite a bit of rust on the tuner and the thing there, which not uncommon to see some rust on them. But the actual... Oh, there's a... I forgot there's a nut loose in, in there somewhere, isn't it? Oh, there was a cable tied loose. Is there a nut still in there? Not coming out if there is. Oh, there it is. It's over here. Oh, thank God, I don't like metal bits loose in there. But yeah, it's actually all corroded, that knob, or that shaft, and then there's rust on the pulley here. Ugh, there. Oh, look at the white on it. Oh, my God. And then the bit underneath is rusted, so that's not a good sign. I reckon this has been used in like a boat or something, but look at that. To get that corroded. Ooh, I don't want that stuff inside the TV, but I reckon that's seized. So, pretty dodgy so far. Not surprising. What's this other stuff connected to? That's the big housing switch. How on earth? Oh, it's part of this whole bracket assembly. Can we? Oh, we can unplug it down here. Yeah, let's get rid of that for starters. So quite a job to get this thing apart. At least we've got the lid separate to the rest of it so I can shake any muck out of there. I wouldn't be surprised if this whole thing breaks off if I try and turn it. And it does actually move. Just. There's a lot of flaky stuff falling off. Oh, that pot's going to need repairing, I think. Because it's going into a potentiometer here and it's actually coming loose for some reason. Something. Oh, the actual bracket's broken. That'd be right. Someone's tried to turn it. Uh, it's broken in two spots, so I'm not even sure. I think it's just the nut holding it together. Don't think I just broke it. But it's certainly getting looser as I do it more, so I better stop doing that, I guess. So we may have some issue with corrosion related issue to be fair the board so far looks okay but yeah that's just about to completely disintegrate I think that plastic bracket that holds it which is not good because it's got a dial cord on it yeah not good at all But it's not like I'm ever likely to use it on RF since there's nothing to pick up on RF, so it's not really the end of the world. I'd be more worried about the brown glue in this thing looking at it. Looks like it's got some of that Daewoo brown glue, which is never good. I guess the next thing to do may be to turn up the screen control, which is the bottom one here, screen and focus. Might as well break them loose, I guess they're going to need to tweak it anyway. No, that's already loose. They've put brown glue on them as well. If we can turn up a raster, just going to work out what we're going to plug back in here. We don't want that, we want the power. I wonder what that white wire does. I reckon that white wire probably wants to plug it in. It's probably some sort of ground or something. Going to have to hook the power switch up as well. And of course I took the bolt out of there, so that's loose, so that's not the best either. Power switch, white wire went in there. I 
Right, let's turn the pin on this thing. Get on there. And what was that? That's the antenna. We don't care about antenna. We don't care about the green wire. We just need to plug that in there. And I hope that's right. I might screw that back together. Still making a weird noise in the yoke or something. So that's all right. And got no audio. Oh yeah, it's making the screen do some weird stuff. And the yoke makes some weird noises. I might clean, you know, if, if it's had corrosion, who knows what the switches are like in this thing. Let's just clean that with some contact cleaner, I guess. That uh, doesn't want to move at all. Off in the case. Ah, uh, well that didn't work. Can't even move the switch now. There we go. Monitor. Uh, dude, that has gone tight. Got no sound. I did get some sound before. Oh wait, do I have a speaker? I probably don't. Where did we unplug the speaker at? That's one of these connectors. Oh, is that? No, that's the gas thing. Oh, is that with the yellow wire? Oh, the yellow one goes around to the speaker. Okay, where did that come from? That was the one at the back. Okay, just so I know what's going on, we'll plug the speaker back in. That's the one near the tuner here with the glue that wouldn't come out. I didn't think that was the speakers, but I wasn't thinking about speakers. So, now there's wiring in the way. Typical Daewoo mess. Okay, let's plug that in. No, still no audio. Assuming that we're connecting to that. That switch certainly doesn't look like it's got very good contacts in it. I'm getting something flicking on the screen when I hold it in that position, a little red dot. And then nothing. So, the next thing like I say is turn the screen up. Ooh, nothing. That's not a good sign. What is going on here? Ooh, now we've got a couple of weird... Wow. I have no idea what that is. <sighs> but we've got a couple of bouncy weird dots on the screen. That is the strangest thing ever. <laughs> what on earth? And turning up the screen doesn't improve it. It just it makes them brighter. But that's not like a normal raster there. Well, who knows? Ooh, something went flick. What on earth is that? I don't think I've ever seen anything like that on the TV before. So the tube's running. I'd say we've got a deflection running. To some degree, but what on earth? Well, I guess one thing, what's the vertical hold set do? So we get, definitely get vertical hold out of this. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, brightness works on it. Have we got a low voltage or something? Quite possibly. No snow sound coming out of the speaker, which I could occasionally get it before. But that's just potentially the IF's not working. We're in, are we in video mode at the moment? No, what? that's the other interesting thing. It wasn't doing that in... Oh, it is sort of there in AV mode, coming and going a bit. Oh, now we've got a ooh, we've got snow behind. What on earth? I have not seen a fault like that before. That is quite impressive. Of course, I've turned the screen up. I guess we've got two. So that is a ripply. Look at it. 
that's definitely power, I think. And whatever it is, as we're warming up, maybe it's getting better, but I'd say we've got a low power rail or something. I wonder what this power supply is meant to put out. What did we find with that other TV? I honestly can't remember with the AWA. I can't remember what voltage it ran on, but it, was it 12? I mean, it should be 12 volts, really. I think pretty sure it was, because, I mean, these are a 12 volt TV, and we've got 9.8 volts. That's probably our problem. Oh, yeah, now the picture's getting bigger and bigger. But ripple on the sides is different signs of bad regulation or something like that. So we're probably finding that the power supply is slowly warming up and putting out more voltage. They so far it's not. But I don't know what it was originally when it actually seems to be going down, if anything. <laughs> you know, that raster is certainly going more than it was. What are those dots on the screen? That's the weirdest. It's actually quite cool. Oh, I can't say I've seen that before. Or anything quite like it. We turn the screen down, it's... making things buzz a bit. Yeah, the focus is working. That is the strangest looking thing on the screen. Well, I didn't think I'd see something new in a CRT TV, but it goes to show there's always something you haven't seen before. Oh, I'm quite impressed by that one. Now we're up to 9.86 volts, so maybe it is slowly rising, but I think it originally was somewhere around there. So what have we got in here? We've got some basic caps. There is a transistor in there. Wouldn't be surprised if our filter cap's completely shot. It's got to be something like that. I mean, it sits up on the top there where everything gets hot, and it is a pretty old TV. And it only has Daewoo parts in it, so... I think we'll start with the power supply, because, I mean, that voltage is directly out of the power supply. Now, it's possible something's putting too much load on the power supply, of course, that'll cause low output as well. Oh, we need that connector. But I guess one thing we could do is actually try it without any load on it and see what voltage comes out of it. Yeah, it's just a typical sort of regulator with a series resistor there. Could be that there's, and we've got brown glue there which is not good. Could be that something here isn't switching that main regulator on properly. I'd say there's a fair chance we've got shot capacitors, but you never know. It could be any of those sort of things. So I say let's plug it in. Let's see what comes out of it. See the other thing you could do, of course, is plug it in. To plug a 12 volt external source in there and see if that fires the TV up nicely, which I guess I could do. I'm not sure. They do pull quite a bit of current, these things. Probably several amps. Yeah. Oh, of course, we haven't got a power switch, have we? Where's the power switch go? It's those two pins there, so I guess what we can do is on is it on the primary or secondary? There's nothing on the main side, so I don't have to panic too much about that. Not like we're shorting out 240 volt pins with 240 volts here, so if I just put a clip lead one end of it over those two pins, if I can get it spread that far, come on clip lead, and I'll just leave the other end floating, again if it's 240 volts you don't want to do that, but if it's not 240 volts it's only going to be 16 volts AC or something there I would think. Whoa, we've got 18 volts, uh oh. <laughs> So, that suggests, yes, no, don't know. It suggests the power supply can work with no load. That doesn't mean it's any good. 
working without a load and working with a load are totally different things. Uh, now how do I hook into this power connector? Almost need to pinch this plug. It's a bit negative on that side. I guess we can just about... I mean, this thing may well run slightly off and they run up more around the 14 volts level. So I'm going to hook my bench supply up. And it was red to this side. I don't want to blow it up. I guess well, we don't even need to hook to the ground one directly. Let's hook to the tuner. And that definitely plugged in with the orange wire over this side. Try not to touch the other pin. Oh, I can hear EHT and stuff. And we've got perfect raster. Oh, actually, when I say perfect, what the hell? We've got some weird... <laughs> we've got some other weird lines on it now. But we've got full raster, no buzzing. Can I lift that up without buggering anything? But we've got some weird, those yellow line things still seem to be there. So there's something else, I think. But we've got a steady sort of raster, full raster. A couple of weird things going on, but that's probably just because we're in TV mode. Oh my god. <laughs> well, part of that is my fault. Actually, we don't have a full size raster there. What are we pulling? Three, nearly four amps. This has got some weird issues in it. But some of that is just because I've got the screen control too far up. Let's tweak that back a bit. It's just got, uh, that should be just a blank black raster. I reckon the current draw is varying a bit, and yeah, it is. I got some weird sounds, but yeah, that's just got bandy. If I turn the Retrace down and it just changed again. Oh man, what is going on here? Horizontal's doing something weird. It's got a lot of possibly, I don't know if that's ringing. That's probably a dud capacitor somewhere. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if we got some dud caps in the, in the horizontal section here somewhere. So that doesn't really prove <laughs> Too much useful. It sounds like we've got a dud power supply and a dud TV. Well, I've just unscrewed the board and it's absolutely filthy. So I don't think that helps much, but hopefully there's not too much corrosion or anything under there. So I'll get that cleaned out and check a few capacitors and things. Other thing I just noticed brushing this out is we've got some possible date stamps. It's pointing to 84. 567, so maybe it was made in 84, made out of HBS-F plastic, could have been ABS, ABSF or HIPS, oh it's HIPS-F is it? And then it looks like the fifth month goes out of 12, and 25, I guess that goes roughly up to 30, so maybe it's the, the days, looks like the fourth, so maybe the fourth of the fifth, 84, probably be about right for this thing. At least the board doesn't look to be in too bad condition here. That cap is possibly dry jointed, this big one. I think it is. Oh yeah, she's she's wobbling around on one pin. Don't know if that means it's actually disconnected, but it probably isn't real good. Okay, I'll get back onto this thing and have a look. What's going on? I think I got as far as soldering a few things in here. Because that big capacitor was loose yeah now it's nicely soldered it did still seem to be connected though and what else did I find oh, I checked the capacitors they were fine the other thing I found is we've got a sort of chain of transistors here from the potentiometer I think it goes through those couple there and then it goes off to the main regulator transistor here and they don't seem to be you're getting the pot varying the base of one and I think the base of the other, but nothing happening on the regulator transistor. So because this thing's basically got a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor between the collector and emitter of the regulator transistor, it just lets the voltage through, but it'll be lower. Uh, if the transistor isn't switched on, it'll be a lower voltage than what you want. The transistor's meant to sort of bypass this resistor to some degree. And I'm pretty sure that we're not getting any signal to this main transistor. So there's something in that chain. I sort of gave them all a quick 
check and the transistor sort of test okay but something's probably open circuit there somewhere I did check the pot that had some of that horrible brown glue that absorbs the moisture on it so I removed that and actually I haven't it from the board it's got a bit of rust and stuff but it all measures fine I think it measures a little bit low if anything but it seems to be working so I don't think there's an issue with that so we've really got to track this through I can't remember what the voltage I did think afterwards that the voltage going into this transistor wasn't that high either so it should probably have a slightly higher voltage you'd expect something around a sort of 14 volts going into the transistor and then it should regulate it down to about 12 I got a feeling it didn't even have 14 volts going into it so I better double check that and I think we're safe to plug plug it in and get it running just being careful because of course there's, there's mains on this plug here and you don't want to be touching those sort of live voltages I think it's only on those two pins on the upper side so we can probably flick that upside down a bit to make it a little bit safer but just remember that's a potential shock hazard there switch the bench back on and we have the TV running again with this horrible noise it makes and probably low voltage I forget where the output is on this oh it comes from a couple of wires somewhere <laughs> Now what was the voltage across this? This is the input cap I think from the bridge rectifier. Yeah, it's only 12 volts. That for a start is not good I don't think. If that is the main regulator in, there's our diodes. I can smell a bit of ozone too. Like we've got a bit of nothing on the screen at the moment. A bit of EHT leaking out somewhere. That must be the pin there. Yeah, it's only 12.38, that seems a bit low. Let's see, how does that... What is this thing? And this is the problem, I'm working out what goes where. There's a yellow wire, oh that goes to the switch on the back of this no doubt. There's a green, so it's the green, green or yellow wire? One of the yellow wire goes there, it's the green wire I think. Yellow, white wire comes back over there somewhere. Still don't seem to have any image. Are we on AV or you're yeah, on monitor at the moment? Oh yeah, when I've touched that I start getting a snowy little bit of those dots on the screen again. So I might just turn that off to be safe before I go touching anything. It would be nice to have a circuit for the thing, but I don't think I could find anything to do with these little daywoos anywhere. So that's our green, I think that's why I had this, I've got a green clip lead onto the tuner there, just make life a lot easier so I'm not having to mess around finding grounds. Now the transistor, the main regulator, 10.5, yeah 10, and that I think was the base there, 11, so best we've got 11 volts which probably isn't enough. This resistor should be across it as well, yeah 11.4 one side so that's probably the in. 9.8 out the other, and I think if we go to the base, we don't get any sort of, oops, careful, any sort of variance of the voltage, which that should be changing. And maybe this whole thing is, whoops, that's not a smart thing to do. Everything's too low somewhere. Six volts, I think that must be the, why am I not getting my, there it is, 12 volts. 12 seems a bit low. Now of course there's a possibility that something's pulling too much current here as well. If we just went straight out of that bridge rectifier into the TV, it'd probably be more use at the moment. The other thing I might do is have a look at this other TV because I'm going to have to fix both of these. Hopefully this one comes apart a bit better. One thing I was thinking is it had this rubbery thing around the tuning knob and stuff and whether that could have been some of that daywoo rubber stuff that goes bad like the oak wedges but the fact it's not actually liquid or anything on that piece means it probably isn't that but I did wonder whether that could have been the source of corrosion somewhere ah oh, great that screw doesn't want to come out brilliant 
That's where you have to shove a screwdriver or something under it and try and lever it up. Someone's probably put here, possibly put the wrong sword in there. I think that was meant to be a metal thread in there. Or was it? Maybe not. Maybe it's just chewed out. Oh, right the... Let's see if this knob comes off this one. Feels just as bad as the last one. I'll try prising both sides up on it. That's better. It wasn't nearly near as tight as the other one. It doesn't look like it's got corrosion or anything there. No, that one looks fine. So that's something. I'm going to try and carefully... Oh, that does not want to come loose. That is solid. Cool. It's like there's glued in there. And we've also got... That needs to come loose. Oh, yeah, that's starting to come. Again, it feels harder than it should be, I think. There we go. Now I know where to press helps. Well, this one looks a lot nicer inside. As I would have hoped. And we've got power. Main cap replaced. 6 of 5th 96, VAL SR, 25 volt, 3300 mic, and I can see someone's there been on that power board there changing things. That's not at all surprising. And what else do we have to undo? Uh, one C, what was it, the antenna or something? On oh, that white wire, that's right. Oh, what was that white wire? I didn't work out what that was actually meant to do, whether that's important or not. Maybe I should have that connected, that was the speaker, the other one. And we've got to disconnect this antenna socket. But yeah, this is in a lot nicer condition. Still got a big blob of brown glue on the pot in the power supply. That does look a little weird, but I think that's just some grease. I guess we can at least see with this now what voltage this one puts out and maybe whether it regulates with our load or not which it probably won't do a lot because like I say that resistor in there you know that's slightly broken <laughs> so someone made a little bit of a mess of that Straight away, it comes up with one now, so that's something. I can go to ground there, so I don't need the orange wire. I mean, I could get to it. Oh, 10.8 volts. Interesting. So it runs on quite a low voltage. Well, is this one full raster? Yeah, it is. Interesting. So it looks like it does drop quite a bit of voltage. Well, that's got 14 on one side, 10.8 on the other. That 14 looks a lot more promising. I do wonder whether that cap isn't shot in the other one, but it seems to measure okay, but I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't disconnect it and measure it on the ESR again in case there's something else across it. Because it'd be the most likely cause of low voltage. is if that cap's gone it's not going to be filtering the power properly and it did have well that can be just low voltage but if the voltage isn't much lower than it should be then it will have ripple on the picture not because of low voltage but because 
This capacitor is shot. Sometimes these ESR meters do lead you astray. Is that something around that leg? Yeah, I don't know. No, it's measuring good. Hmm. Very odd. Well, I can just plug this other power supply into this TV, I guess, and just prove a point. Whether it's able to regulate and run this thing. Sometimes it's the easiest way when you've got something you're not familiar with and you don't have a circuit. I can just put a clip lead over that, I guess, couldn't I? What's the other option? Oh, we've got 12 volts. Oh, yeah, we're running nice. I think 12 volts would be about right. That's the regulated side, I think. Oh, make a ground connection. 12, 12.6 and 14. So, so that power supply is fine. So it is a, a issue in the TV. Oh dear. I wonder if, that other, if this other power supply is running a bit low. 10.6 seems a bit low. Well, that proved it one way or another. Now, where's the RGB adjustments in this thing? Oh, over here, probably under the tube. Neck. And we've got horizontal hole, vertical height. Very purple picture. That power supply, let's we'll see if we can actually adjust it, I guess, is the next thing. If I can make a connection to it. Something just go off then. Still got 12 volts there, though. Oh, it's not adjusting. Oh, now we can go down to 10. Why is that pot not moving? Screwdriver is no good, I don't think. I'm going to go 12 down to between 10 and ooh, 14. We don't want to go that high, I don't think. Let's set it to 12. I hear this TV doing something weird. It's not running. Huh, now we're on 13 volts, what the hell? Oh, because the TV's got no load. Huh. Now we're stuck on 13 volts, or up to 16 volts. I think this TV's got an intermittent in it somewhere. Blown something. Now we're going to 10 volts. Uh, make up your mind. Well, that's what you get for working on day with stuff. Where's the horizontal output in this thing there? So if anything feels hot here, not particularly. So why did it just die? <sighs> so I've got two kind of dodgy TVs here now. I don't know. I still don't know what this white wire is meant to do. I probably should check that I having that. 
Disconnect is probably not ideal. That is... What is that? The positive of the... Oh. I think that's the main filter cap output. Yeah, power switch. Filter caps. It actually goes from that. No, that's the white wire. Oh, is it... Yeah, they're both connected to that. Oh, so maybe there is a... I wonder what they do with that voltage. It's like they're putting the unregulated voltage in here to run something. And there's that piece that goes over the pot in this one. It's just floating around in there. Must have fallen off when I took the knob off. Hmm. So I'm really none the wiser. It's now just dead. So that could run the tuner voltage or something, who knows what it runs, probably something different. Well, not. Disconnect all this. At least it looks like that power supply is a go up. The next question is, have we blown a fusible or something? Let's see. How does that come to bits? I guess that just peels off there. Need to go on such a loose metal bracket down there, that's handy. It's got clips. Oh, it must have more screws than that, I would think. This tube part should come off or come loose to some degree. It doesn't really want it. I think I need to take that neck board off for safety's sake of not risking breaking anything. If this suddenly comes loose, God, how far do you have to, do you have to keep bending it? Or do we have to prise it at this point? Probably have to prise it apart. Oh, there are clips there. Someone's been in this before. Come on. Kind of got to push up and back like that. You know, it's a bit mark the plastic a bit. Oh, no. Ooh. If you don't hear that rushing air sound of a gas tube, you're right. Are there any other screws? Oh, there's one I've missed on the back there. I think that's it. Not the easiest thing to work on. These little TVs never are they usually. Bit impractical for them to make them very easy. That's the board free. We should have left everything out. This is how you usually got to work on them. Someone's written something there. Have we got a date? This one looks like 1984, 5th, 10 something. So it's built almost the same as the other one, I think. Wasn't that the 5th of 84? If that is a date. Now one thing we're going to look at first is, or look for first, is dry joints. A couple on that connector, which is the degaussing coil. That transistor there is pretty bad. That's probably your vertical output. That would be horizontal output. Now where's the drive air drive transformer here? Doesn't look the best. That is a common cause for TVs not running. Line output actually looks good, so at least they soldered that properly. And yeah, generally not the greatest soldering, but I think those areas are the worst of it. It's connected in the front here is worth a look. That definitely doesn't look the best. If this chip loses power or anything, you'll lose everything. Yeah, the 
horizontal output doesn't look the best, but it's just because someone's sort of... Is that connected? That's not even connected, I don't think. Looks like someone's soldered it and cut the leads off, but that pin on the end almost looks like it's floating in the air, but I could be wrong. Like, not connected to the trace. Probably just... The way someone's done it, I think. Just put too much solder on there. Let's check the horizontal on the way up while we're in here. Make sure we haven't blown it with too much voltage or something. Yeah, base. Ooh. What the hell? If it's shorter to one, it has to be shorter to both. Is that the track? Nothing. Right. That's just a capacitor or something, probably. But that certainly won't have to resolder that again, even though someone's done something to it at some point. Uh, the degaussing coil. Yeah, one side of that's pretty bad. It did look a bit like it needed a degauss, so whether that was disconnected or not working, who knows. Wow, that really sounds bad. That's usually a sign of a leaky capacitor or something. What on earth is that? That's not even a capacitor, that's an inductor. That sound is... Always a giveaway that there's some juice on the board somewhere. It could just be flux or something, but that sounds like a lot more than flux to me. Yeah, there's something wet I can see under a capacitor there. Is it wet? Or is it just solder? That's the inductor. I'm not sure why that's making that noise. There's something green on one end of it probably doesn't help. Is that the end of soldering? I think that's the other end of soldering. Hmm. That cap's got something white on its lead, so maybe there is something around there. Of course, it's right where you can't see much. Yeah, it's right. There's something. Is it just the paint? Uh, hard to tell. Very hard to tell. More of that sound on that transformer. More of it there. Hmm, don't like the sound of that much at all. Some random transistor there. You can guarantee the vertical output here, which is these couple of transistors are bound to be a bit dicky. They're definitely dodgy those transistor connections They're not too bad on that chip I don't think I realize there was a connector somewhere wasn't there that I was looking at all that definitely looks like a couple of joints on that aren't the best Bridge a couple, I should really get the thinner solder out for this. Yeah, a couple of those are pretty bad.
Okay, well at least we can get access to all the important bits. Now, can we plug the power supply in easily while we're like this? We did have the issue of the pitcher didn't come up straight away, so you wonder whether the heater or something's got a dry joint. There's actually a cut off wire here, what on earth is that? Black wire next to a yellow wire. Yeah, same on the other one, so that's something Daewoo's done in the factory. Looks like it's just something going to the earth. Oh, yeah, maybe it was the original tube earth, or they were going to use that in something. Don't know. Yeah, what is this? It seems to go to that resistor there. Feeds a couple of capacitors, and it is heading towards the tuning section, I think. That extra connector that's not regulated, so maybe it is, like I say, something to do with the tuning voltage or something. Wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Well, let's hook her up and see what she does. I need to bypass that switch. switch terminals and well, I guess the other thing I could just run 12 volts into this from the power supply it might be even safer Let's see if this will fit at least yeah, it doesn't give much room to work on it is the problem unless I'll get this over to one side I guess that might work Let's get the power supply over here somewhere so ideally you want this so that this you can get the underside of the board. Oh, another simple thing that's going to take hours. I can hear it running. Obviously we haven't got a tube connected. Oh, at least it's going. Oh, what on earth is that on the neck? God, if someone does something dodgy to... Or is that just to stick this? Ooh, yuck. It's got brownie glue stuff on it, which is not what I want to see, but... Yeah, what all that white stuff is on the tube. Weird. And the problem is we've got this board, and we're going to have weight hanging on the tube, which is never a good thing. The fact it's running is probably enough to not really need to do much more, but... Hopefully we're safe to fire that up, and at least if the tube's lighting up. Yeah, we've got horizontal running and vertical, I can hear, oh yeah, heater's on. Can I carefully pick this up without... Yeah, we're back to snowy raster. Where's that voltage coming there? So why that died, I have no idea. But it could have been a dry joint or something. Okay, got this thing back together. Let it warm up. It needed quite a bit of screen control adjusting up. But we check that by turning the contrast right down. Shouldn't have any retrace lines there on the darker settings but it did have it was quite low and I've just found these little trim pots there is a little server switch here near the neck board and there's a trim pot right next to that and then another one towards the back and they set our color balance or at least the low lights probably green or red it was originally quite purple like that and the other one is the blue setting I'll get that as monochrome as possible. I will hook up a pattern generator is the best thing. Let's get into monitor mode. Huh. We are in monitor mode, aren't we? No. Video in. Oh, we should have a video there. But 
but we don't. Of course, there's probably an issue with the AV inputs. Like the switch is dicky or something. Oh, there it is. And we've got vertical holdout. Course, the camera doesn't want to pick that up very well. Uh, contrast, where's the brightness? No, still doesn't want to show up very well. Yeah, the colour's still a little bit out. But that, that video switch is a bit dicky. Oh, that seems to be working now once it's locked in. I might have to put some contact cleaner in that one as well. The other one was pretty hopeless on the other TV. And it's just a matter of, that's a bit blue, we still got something keeps dropping out occasionally. I assume these other pots set the highlights, but that's not doing a thing. Oh, I'm not tweaking some random adjustment in this TV. Yeah. Looks like I am. <laughs> Assume the other pot's there. Yeah, yeah, that's a worry. Pick green. I'm sure there's more than two adjustments for the colours. Yeah, that's something not right there. That's pretty good. So what do these other trim pots do if if it's not that? Is it the highlights? Doesn't seem to do much at all. I mean, that is definitely the red there. That's very weird. Well, the colour bars are looking good. Turn the contrast down, contrast up, that must be the colour. I think that's pretty good. And yeah, nice on the retrace there. Do have a bit of purity error, but me holding it in this angle probably doesn't help. Now let's get the dots and try and get that focus as best. Yeah, right there, I think. Too bad a geometry, something keeps flicking. I don't know if that's because I've just got this in pieces like this. Hopefully that's nothing too major. Interestingly, the LED has stopped flashing and gone green. I guess that's because we're in AV mode, isn't it? Now, the other problem I have is this AV switch. Of course, it's dicky, so this TV has quite a few issues. Even though I think this one was meant to be largely working. But, they're never largely working. Again, this contact, new contact cleaner is... Made the switch hard to move. Very hard to move. So I don't think the lubricant in it is the best. But these slide switches can be a bit of a mongrel for doing that. You lube them, and they stop working. 
don't know why that TV occasionally was dropping out. Yeah, I can see from the back of the tube that we have an image. So at least that Swift Link's reliable now. You know, click but snow and AV. So that's yeah, now it's moving better now. So that's the CRC stuff helped out a bit, I think. Chance that looks like it is the same as the switch next to it, which is the AFT on off, so you could probably steal that if you wanted to. That is a lot easier to use, but that's probably because I didn't put any contact cleaner in it. I think that can be called pretty much a working TV. Guess we should try the tuner. While well, I've got a pattern generator here. But I suspect oh, I can see something there. How do we? Oh, of yeah, course, the knob there. I suspect it may not. Oh, this is. It is a. It's a digital tuner, as in a Veracta tuner. It's just got a volt, variable voltage from this front thing. Oh, that's working. So I don't know what that other connector did, but anyway, I'm going to audio course. But the tuner works as well, so that's good. We got AV and we got RF. Excellent, so everything's working on this TV. So at least I've got one good one. Let's check that monochrome again. Yeah, that's definitely better than it was. So those other pots do adjust something, they just don't do anything that obvious. I guess I need to put this back with its original power supply and just make sure it runs but this power supply is now well tested and we know that's definitely a goer well, this one's missing the antenna too isn't it I should really pinch since this is the better one I probably should put the antenna off the other one onto this one Let's have a look at the antenna while we're at it. Except my screwdriver has vanished again. There it is. See how this antenna has got some sort of plastic cover, maybe just for safety reasons. Uh, and it is just a screw. And the base should pull up. You may have to push it from below as well. Oh, we do need to check that the gauss is working, I guess. I might grab it with some side cutters or something. See if I can... Oh, that is stuck in there. Oh, great. Oh, we've got some sort of slot in there. The problem is I'm going to make a mess out of it, whether I get it out or not. What I might have to do is, so oh, it is a fit, let's get one of the even longer screws, that same thread. A bit of longer screw, the one that was used on the power socket of the other TV. Screw that in a little bit and just... Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't help that I'm sitting on the bench, but that is... Oh, there it goes. That is stuck. No oh, one they were, they probably glued it in there or something. <sighs> well, it moved, but it hasn't come out by any means. Jeez, come on. It's rotating, so yeah, just a matter. That is a very tight fit. But while I've got on both the parts. This other one I think had a good one on it. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna steal it off that one since it is not in the best condition. So it's that easy to get that other wire off. I guess it's just attached. The one on the antenna socket is just attached to that. Let's see if this well this one's at least got an antenna to yank on to get it out easy. 
a lot easier hopefully I might even put that old base in this one so I've got something to screw the antenna connection to but that should in theory <sighs> yeah it's going to be tight there I think at least you've got something to well that rotates doesn't it so it doesn't really help with the oh my god that is tight how are they so tight just give it a bit of a wobble get rid of this other one oh my god i'm gonna break it before i get it out i think oh. problem is this bit pivots within it that is insane you'd think that would just be a quick easy swap job and it's not I thought I'll just quickly swap the antennas over It'd be easy to swap the old cover over I think I think this one's got a bit of damage though it does I'll see if we can bang this one out as well my god ah, these are little things Hit it with a hammer, I think. We can shock it loose. That did something. Oh, yeah. Bash it with a big enough hammer and you'll get what you want. You just gotta be careful of this plastic getting a bit old and brittle. But that method seems to work fairly well. Oh, God damn it. Okay. That's a bit sharp now. I need to really bend that. Back, I probably shouldn't have cut it, grabbed it with the cutters, but yeah, that goes a particular way with that flat to the back. I'm not sure I really want to press that in real hard anyway. Can I just put a nut in there or something? Why is it so tight? I mean, I'm probably not gonna do anything with it anyway. Long enough. Not sure which one came off which TV now, but it doesn't really matter. I could possibly put a longer screw in there anyway if I can find one. That just goes in good, that'll do. I don't want to overly tighten it up. That's about where it goes, I think. Oh no! <laughs> it broke the plastic cover. Oh, that's a great design. Well, that should have gone in like that, I would have thought, but there you go. I guess the other thing I could do is maybe if I grease it up a bit or something might be a an idea. I'm gonna put a slight bit of clear grease down that hole. Because at least I won't be so tight then. Maybe a bit on the unit. That's the best way to do it. It's got to reduce the friction enough to make it a bit easier. Oh, substantially easier. Has that actually got in the full amount? I don't think it has got that little piece where it needs to go, that little flat bit. That's it, just went in that little bit further. That's what you need. Uh, let's get that around this wire, I don't know if it was originally or not, but. Yeah, maybe I didn't have that terminal far enough out of the way. And it broke this little plastic thing. Yeah, maybe. So much fiddling around these things.
I guess we better check this speaker. Runs. That sucker doesn't look fully. Someone hasn't screwed that up properly, or someone's played with the screw. Probably doesn't want to be too tight, but since there seems to be a gap, go away, fluke. Go away, stupid buttons and these things. One thing I don't like about fluke is that hold, touch hold button, or whatever it is, you know, touch hold, auto range, whatever button. Never use it for anything, but it always gets pressed accidentally. And locks up your meter or something. Probably should open it up and disconnect the thing, I guess would be the smart thing to do. Now that went over here for degaussing, I think, so we've got to check the degausser operates. I did set this power supply as well, didn't I? So this should be the right voltage. It's uh, a switch, we've got the audio in. Yeah, someone broke this plug somehow. In theory, I probably should sort that as well, but that's not really that important. Once it's in, it's fine. Oh, socket's got to be screwed back on. Screw it off, it's gone. Yeah, quite time consuming compared to a normal size TV. We can work on a much easier than this. Well, that's a bit of a pain to work on, but anyway, that's should be pretty much a work on television. I mean, in theory, I probably shouldn't have put it back together until I've worked out what's wrong with the other one, but I'm sure we can work out what the fault is in that. That weird set of lines on it, and possibly why it's pulling a bit too much voltage. Too much current, I should say. Not enough voltage because it's pulling too much current. That is back together. Let's just try it before we screw it up. And make sure we haven't screwed it up. This thing mutes. I think we had sound on the other one. Oh, now we've got retrace. That'll be alright, put it back together, it decides to play up. You can pretty much guarantee that it'll happen. That's why I always put the back cover on as the final test, because if it still works with the back cover on, it's definitely working. should be colour, but if I turn the colour down, oh, what just happened then? Oh, that must have been, oh, I'm on RF, I must be. I thought it was on tuna. Well, I'm AV, I'm on RF. Lines are just my pattern generator, which I must get around to fixing. Oh, that's monitor mode. But you know, seemingly no audio. So maybe something with that speaker or something. 
Or is that another issue with this one? I can't believe the tubes come up with retrace now. After I checked and double checked that. Oh. Before I do anything, let's check the degausser. Actually operates, because if we're going to check this thing. So quiet running, you can, can't really tell if it's on or off. And currently I don't think it's on, or is it because I'm on monitor mode? That degausser doesn't seem to do anything. It, well, you can see it. See a little flick on the screen would suggest it's doing something. It's not just from me moving the TV. Yeah. It is a day work. Okay, I've got it apart roughly. I guess the first thing I see is do we have eight ohms across the speaker connector? Even while it's in the circuit, because it is a headphone socket, 17 ohms. What is it, a 16 ohm? It is a 16 ohm. So that's working. I oh, don't know, that means we've got an audio issue. And that could be switching related. Ah, oh, that's a pain. And I don't know if there's degaussing things working. I think we'll have a, probably find we've got a short circuit across the degaussing coil, you'd hope so. Yep, six ohms. Now let's check if the switch works. Open circuit. Yep, switch operates. I would have thought we'd see more. So I might just check if there's a voltage there. Or something switching obviously with that. Yeah, that's running, I can hear the vertical. Clip lead back in place for the earth. Oh, of course, the other lead's all wrapped around it, so I can't get any length. What the? 124 volts? That must be coming out of something else. I don't see any voltage there, but is that because I'm not connected? Although, to be fair, if it's hooked to a degaussing coil, it's probably going to drop. Which it does. Can you see something happen there, but... It'll probably be ground, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how they have set this up, but it probably is working. I'll have to magnetise it a bit and see. Now, the other problem is the... Suddenly we've got retrace lines everywhere. Oh, but now we don't. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit there. Maybe it's just because I didn't turn the light off and check it properly. Plenty of brightness. I can see a little bit of degaussing issue there, or magnetism issue. I can hear something go ding, so it must be doing something. And we've got the issue of no audio still, so that's going to be a bit of a pain to. Yeah, making that noise again anyway. Or am I pressing, I'm probably pressing the button. Yeah, 
And definitely when I press the button it makes that noise, so I'd say the degaussing's definitely working. It just must do a little pulse thing rather than a... Maybe it's discharging a cap or something rather than having a ongoing thing. Now where's the... oh yeah, the volume controls there. Like I say, it could be related to this. I guess I should try the AV in, see if it makes any sound. I want to get the CD player going. Because it's possible it's not in the amp stage. to unmute it by hooking the video back in if I could find my lead because some of these things need sync to unmute no following doesn't seem to make any sound like it's like the speakers connected I wonder where the amplifier is in this thing. Oop. That is a good question. Where's the volume control? Well, it just comes in a bundle of wires everywhere. We do have an audio out, don't we? That's another point. Nice one, they give you a couple of extra connections. So if we go to the auxiliary of the amp. Oh yeah. So it looks like we've got audio that far. Yeah, that's the test pattern generator. So the audio is getting that far. It probably means the audio going in there is getting somewhere. But it could be this switching shot or something. Yeah, that's going to be a bit difficult to work out, possibly. But then this is. Uh, I wonder if it's all under this cover. Well, at least, uh, yeah, if we've got RF in, we're not, we can trace that signal. So what's this here? That might be our volume control, I wonder. Where does it go? Does it keep going up to the... Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's our volume control right there. Does this just come off or is it soldered on? Ah, it's soldered on the corner of course. I can see it looks like just an IF stage in there. But I could be wrong about that because where's, unless it's just a couple of transistors here or something, we've got a couple of caps. Maybe it's those two transistors, the amp or something. Could be that simple. But we did soon have audio or oh, speaker connection. Double check that again. Well, I was assuming at least to this. Whether it's connected to the board underneath or whatever. One thing I should, I don't know if I already sold all the joints on that, that probably needed joints resoldering on it. No, my luck. Because that connector gets pulled on a lot of times. Turn the TV on, I'll just quick, give it a quick poke with the oscilloscope, see if I can see that one kilohertz there on the volume. Uh, how do I do? I've got to hook that amp. I should really just leave the amp on there, I guess, so I can 
tell if anything's running. Where's the cable gone? Yeah, we know I've definitely got... And shut that up a bit. I'd just like to have it there to make sure I'm... it's definitely there. Oh, there it is. That's one side of the volume. That's the variable side of the volume. I've got a sine wave going up and down. Just make sure I haven't got anything. So the white wire is the signal back. Yeah, I've got a signal. That's the volume control coming across here somewhere. That's probably ground. It's got to be coming across here somewhere, isn't it? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, that capacitor. I assume it'd be on the other side if it's on that side. Yep, comes out of that cap. It's on that resistor. Can't really get to this transistor. I mean, it does go into the base of that transistor. It's on that capacitor. And we'll get to the collector or anything. Cause it's the one transistor they've stuck really short on the board. Nothing coming out of it. That could be the emitter, I guess. Whether that is meant to. Ah, great, so we've got some audio issue. Not much good if it doesn't come out of that transistor, so we might have to compare that to the other TV. So I can't really put this one back together yet, unfortunately. <sighs> well, that's a lot of messing around for what I think was supposed to be a working television. Oh, wait up, we've got this... Um, that lead's come out again. Could that be something to do with the audio? Where is the pin for it? There. Well, it's not impossible. Given it goes into something down there, well, I better hook that up and try it again. Ah. Uh, well, now we know what that does. Ah, uh, it happened to slip off. Yeah, that's the power to your amplifier. Oh, well, that solves that issue. <laughs> solves the question of, yeah, this white wire here. On the power supply, I just noticed that it had slipped back off again. So when I was messing around putting it together, it must have come off the pin. And that's your power to your audio, obviously. Oh, well, that's a relief. So this TV is basically a runner. If I can get it back together without breaking anything or having any plugs fall off again. Now we are on, I guess, RF. Definitely RF. Where did the colour go? It's gone weird. Yeah, RF isn't tuning in properly. Oh, there it is. Oh, where's the volume? Shut up. No retrace there. Don't think there's any retrace there. Good. Yeah, that's the CD coming through. Needs a degauss again. But not surprising after all the fiddling I've done. Let's put it on the red screen. Although, uh, really need it in the right position. Where's that button? Doesn't really do much. Okay, I've got a real degaussing coil out. That's what a degaussing coil should look like. Still a little bit out in the corner. 
Yes, I'm still not 100% sure. I can hear it go ding. Maybe it's only for minimal degaussing. I've got a little bit of a patch back there. Oh yeah, got rid of it. It's just pretty weak, I think, which makes sense. It's only a low voltage power supply and stuff, so maybe, like I say, it's just charging up a cap and discharging it or something. thing is even on RF that stopped flashing so does that do it when it's oh and there's no signal ah okay well, that explains that little problem so the green light flashes that's not really sitting the best in there flashes until you get a proper signal then it goes green to show it's on a signal it's got sync pulses or something I think the other thing may be missing off these is it looks like they must have had a plastic cover over them at some stage. But that one seems to be largely working now. It's reliably doing what it should. That switch is still not perfect, but once you click it into position, I think it's alright. Ah, so we've got a VHF UHF switcher, do we? I didn't even notice that does it doesn't do anything. Oh, I don't think that's another issue. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm, my, I'm on monitor, I think. Oh, that doesn't help. Uh, have I still got RF plugged in? Yep. I don't think I tweaked it, did I? Oh, I've broken it now. Squeaky. Oh, that's really weird. Yeah, now it's definitely that's UHF. It was kind of in between before. Alright. Oh, right, there it is. Around there somewhere. Hmm, or not. Come on, where's my signal? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a little dicky that tuner, I think. Yeah, you, it loses it, and then it... Yeah, it's a little picky when I go off it. If I sort of... Of course, now it's going to work. Yeah, like you'll get like a blank screen. Nothing, and if we go back, it'll lock in red. So maybe it's the colours a bit slow to lock in or something. Now, let's give it a bit more colour, would help. Yeah, you just get that. Then go back a little bit, and there it is. But yeah, that's UHF. A little bit of flicking going on there, but... I'm not sure that's that, probably that switch still, is it? Yeah, the pictures are blooming and going in and out a bit there. Geometry doesn't look quite as good as it was. We're on a, a, oh no, we're on RF, are we? Oh, that's probably why it's not. RF is never the most reliable thing. Am I seeing some sort of ripple going through? Is it moving or not? Definitely a bit of size changing there. Yeah, I think there's a ripple in this picture. Yeah, because these squares are bending on the edge. Yeah, it's got a bend at the top. That one's bent. So I'm not sure this power supply is 100%. Well, the longer you run this thing, the worse it gets. But at least it's generally running. I wasn't expecting too much from a Daewoo, but... She's a bit funny still. Get back to the grey scale, make sure that brightness didn't seem to be doing much then, but I think it's just that's contrast. Yeah, brightness is definitely doing something. 
So, you know, it is not going to be the greatest TV anyway, but that one for now we'll call working. Obviously, it needs a test run. You can never trust these sort of things until you get let them warm up fully and run them and all that sort of thing. Okay, so I pulled the base off this other one. I was just going over doing the dry joints. Anything that looked dodgy. So again, the vertical output transistors. Yeah, that speaker connector. Definitely want it going over. This one wasn't too good. The connector along there. A few bits around the horizontal. When I was going over the horizontal, I noticed a couple of bad joints on this. There's an electrolytic C425. Which made me immediately suspicious of that. And that's this little... One down near the horizontal drive transformer here. There's one down here next to there's a big cap there. We've got some of this brown glue that wants to go, an inductor. And as soon as I saw the top side of the cap, I thought, yeah, that looks like the plastic shrunk back. And I just put the ESR meter on that. And yeah, she's no good at bottle of it, completely open. I wouldn't be surprised if that's just where our lines are coming from on the picture. Oh, now it decides to friggin' work. <laughs> yeah, so it's only measuring 14 now. I did measure open circuit first when I checked it, so that'd be right. Let's check this other big cap here. That's another potential one, but that's 0.2. I'll have to see what value that is. I think I'll take that brown glue off there. We've got a bit of corrosion on the edge of the board. So, of course, made a liar of me. But that's exactly the sort of thing that will cause those sort of issues. It may not be the problem, but... And yeah, our problem with too much current being drawn can be something like this brown glue, but it looks like it's only connecting to those two parts anyway, but I think to be safe... I'm going to remove both those... that inductor and that capacitor. And pull them off the board, scrape the worst of that glue off there. Because that brown glue is terrible stuff for both corroding as well as conducting electricity. It may not be the really bad stuff in this case, but they we were well known for using that stuff as well as some other manufacturers. You don't actually get every bit of it off. In many ways it doesn't hurt to, but get it off at least where it's gonna, or it's using some side cutters to scrape it off this inductor. What I can, get it off any conductive parts. Where it can touch voltages and stuff, and the more you get off in case it does go all wet and horrible and corrosive. Actually, while I'm at it, I might pull that. That gives me easy access to that capacitor. C425 here. Might as well pull it off and have a look with it. I reckon that's on its way out for sure. Oh, yeah, look at it corroded to... Yeah, that lead's definitely leaking out. What is it, a 470, oh, 470 mic? That should, should definitely not measure that high. That's probably going to be the main issue with those weird lines on the picture. I guess I should probably check a couple of these others around the vertical circuit. Before we power this thing up again, while everything's discharged, that seems to be fine. Usually that sort of liney stuff on the pitch is some sort of ringing in the horizontal or something, so it's often something you'll find around the horizontal circuit will be some dud electro somewhere. There's another one right there. 4.8. What is it exactly near the drive transformer? It's a yeah, 3.3250 volts. So that's another sort of thing that can sometimes cause faint lines or something. Uh, higher value cap like that. There's another one down here. So that can be like your, your video voltage or something and if they go bad you'll get sort of ringing or lines some sort of ripple on the rail or something. 
but usually they're a lot fainter than those weird yellow lines this thing had. That's probably the main capacitors of interest. There's another one over near the tuner, but I don't think that's anything important. It's usually in the horizontal circuit because the horizontal, of course, has all the rails coming out of the line output transformer that feed a lot of different voltages around the thing, particularly like the video to the tube. And that's where you'll find these sort of things dead. Everything's hot around there. All day we made caps, 470 mic, 16 volt. See if I can find another one of those. So I've gone down in size a bit since then. So let's put that in. Negative should be here. They've got the little white lines on the negative side. There may be other issues with this TV, but that should at least solve some of the problems. Hang on, wait, shit, well, is a negative on this? Does it have a negative? 10 mic, 25 volt, I wonder if that's a non-polarised... That's probably our, um... Does it go to the yoke? It looks like it, yeah, through that inductor to the yoke, so that's a yoke coupling cap. I'll just double check it out of... Ah, oh, that was still on. Check it out of circuit. That'll normally cause. Ooh, don't do that to me. I think it's just. Oh, I didn't connect. Yeah, 0.12, so that's pretty good. 10 mic, 25 volt. Yeah, so that doesn't matter which way I put that in, I don't think. I can tell from the brown glue that it would have gone that way anyway, because the brown glue was on the outside. And our inductor. That's not our inductor, that's our dodgy cap. But off one of these things, you just if you've we, got a fault like that, you'd, there's not much point even trying to fault find it as such. You just go and check the caps because it's pretty much always going to be a faulty electrolytic there somewhere. But you know, you, you know which sort of section to look for it. And again, it's because it runs fairly hot in that area. So we've got all those back in. I think we can fire this thing up again. Chuck that cap out. And see if it at least runs. Ooh, that doesn't sound too nice when it goes on. I don't like them when they're a bit crunchy. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the power in there, we've got that shorted out. I think I'd like to just fire that up. I'll turn my cord off first since this one's a bit live and dangerous. Yeah, I can hear that squeal. We've got heaters. Ooh, Jesus, what was that? Still on, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I don't seem to have any snow. Well, it sounds like something's crackling, but it's just a mechanical thing moving around. But that could be a AV input switch is dicky or something. It doesn't really do anything. Interesting. What are we on? Bars. Can't get RF because I can't tune it. Hmm. No idea. So where does the video and stuff, we don't really know, it's all these different wires everywhere that do it. Almost need to hook it up so I can get the... 
Well, one thing I must check is do we have what voltage? Is this power supply regulating now or not? Yeah, it's sitting on 12 volts. So I wonder if that cap was responsible for all those issues. Possibly it was why the yoke was making funny noises, the power supply wasn't running properly, all that stuff. But now I seem to have no video. Okay, that should give us audio. Hmm. Well, that's audio. And we got hash from the tuna. Well, at least we know that's working, but we've still got no picture. We've just got a raster. And turn up the screen control, get that. But it doesn't have any like brightness or anything like that. So that could be an issue around this TDA or TA chip. 7698 is it, I think that's what they are. But the audio section seems to work. I guess the other thing is if we go to monitor off, I can quickly get the oscilloscope and just check. Is there a video on that video out socket? Which is there, I think. Oh, there is something there, I think. Yeah, I'd say that's probably some sort of. Yeah. If I could stay connected for five seconds. And flick the right knob here. Oh, is that a video? Or is that just some sort of. It's not really a video waveform. Here we've got hashy sound. God, this thing's impossible to connect to. Yeah, that's much more like a proper sync signal and stuff. Now, what are these switching? Uh, that's what I don't know. And then where does the video come in and go out? Wasn't it something with these brown wires I was when I was looking at the other one? Yeah, we've got staircase patterns there. indicator it says there so maybe that's the flashing LED there or something I really need to so I used to have circuits of a dozens of these little TVs with the TDA or TA7698 and it was very easy to track where everything went but I should be able to find a data sheet on that thing I think so I might have to leave it till I do that But at least this thing's behaving itself a lot better now after changing that capacitor. But it's just weird that we can't get any sort of signal on it. And strangely, is that just because the vertical holds out? The retrace doesn't seem to be... Oh yeah, that was the vertical hold, so that's stopped the retrace rolling and carrying on flickering. I think we just got a dead video stage somewhere. So I'm going to have to try and track down, so I've probably got a working IF by the sound of it, but I can't tune it because of this thing. going to have to sort out another, another pot there I think, or at least free that up somehow. Yeah, so that's not breaking that bracket. But I'll get back onto that. Okay, back onto this after looking up some info on the chip. And pin 1 should have 12 volts, which I don't think any vertical or anything will run without it. Ooh, we only got 4 volts, I think. 
Seems a bit low. And pin 39 should be the video input. Not sure how many volts this thing's meant to run on, but I would have thought it'd be running right on the 12 or something. Now without a circuit for this particular set, it's a bit hard to know what voltage is feeding it. Do we have a 5 volt rig or something? Because we've got a couple of CMOS chips here. That might be a good place to look actually. I forget which pins are which on these. I think it's 8 and 16. Got 12 volts on one pin. Or pin 1. Nothing on 7. And 12 on 14 now, yeah, so they're not running on 5 volts. Yeah, 4 volts seems a bit low. But we do have some vertical deflection, so something's running in that tip and horizontal, which I don't think any of that will run. Hmm. Guess the other thing is to look at it on pin 39 and see if it looks like a video signal gets that far. Because again, they might prove if the chip's actually faulty. Oh, it'd be nice if I could make a good ground connection. And we've got 42, 41, 40, so that's 39 forward down. Oh yeah, there's video going in. Okay. Let's turn that off, so maybe that's the issue. Get rid of some of these cables just for now. Because it looks like video is going into our TDA chip, so you'd think it would be coming out again, but that doesn't mean we've got some other video issue here and this is just a fur for you looking for the voltage going into the chip, but I'll start with that because I just think it seems a bit low, but doesn't mean much, looks like it goes through a resistor, Are you sure it's pin one? <laughs> ah, 203 there Which is a 330 ohm, I think. That just goes to a capacitor. Oh, wait, there's another resistor that goes to ground. Right down the seat, right. Something can't be right here. That's pin one. It's not connected to that. It's not connected to that. It's definitely connected to that. No, I think this is how I lend. I'd better go and check the data sheet again, I think, because that can't be right. No, my bad, it was pin 2 is VCC1. I think that's what threw me. I should have just printed the data sheet out, I guess, but... Let's plug video back in. What did I disconnect the audio? So I don't care about that at the moment. And is the main still safe? Yeah, I think so. A lot harder to tell if it's running or not. One reason to have the audio on it. So, pin two. Yeah, 11.8 volts. Possibly a little bit dry looking, but I think that's just light. Check there's no dry joints on that chip, I guess. Oh, looks good. Not the world's greatest soldering, but... Okay, so where... I guess I should have made a note of where the drive comes back out of it. Shouldn't be too hard to track. Well, we, we know there's pots around here for various adjustments and connectors going up to the tube. Oh yeah, there they are, three RGB, I can see three. Oh yeah, they're even labelled blue, red, GN. So it's Q802, 803, 801. They're our driver transistors for the tube. So we could have some oddball problems around there. Uh, I'm going to have to hook this ground back up, it's a real pain. Haven't hooked the multimeter up all the time to ground. So let's just, this way, just join your multimeter to ground. 
and leave it there. 135, 135, 135. So the tube's fairly cut off, which is what you would probably expect in this situation. Seven, seven, sounds about what you'd expect probably. Well, they're normally, I think, the, it's the emitter higher than the base. Usually there's NPN transistors. Unless that's, oh, it says ECB. Unless they're lying about what is what. Let's have a look at that. It goes back, back, back. That's not it, I don't think. Where does it go to? They're all joined to ground, I think. But they do look like possibly three RGB lines. I'm not sure where they're going. Okay, have a quick poke with the oscilloscope. But that's the sort of thing we might have. It's just the tube's biased off because there's no video there or something. It doesn't look like anything less video than what was going out of the IF. So that's looking very dead. So why have we got no output out of the chip? I'm now going to have to find out where the RGB's come from, I think. But there doesn't seem to be a single thing. Oh, we do have a little bit of video there. I wonder if they have lied about what connections what are you. It's not a lot, but it's something. Uh, I don't know if that sort of counts as video. I don't know what that signal is. It's not video. It's just rubbish we're picking up, I think. Wrong grayscale. Oh, you know, that's just rubbish on the... I don't know why the emitter's got rubbish on it, but... Oops. Base is basically dead. It's got a bias voltage on it or whatever, but that's... They all got a ground. Oh, is it that capacitor? No, that goes to ground as well. Where on earth does the signal come from? Oh, wait, is there a... No, it's not a second connection. You've got that line, that line, and... I think all three of them together here come along into some resistors, through the resistors... Oh, here we go. Oh, do we? Oh, they will be coming out of the chip. Let's check pin 39 again, just make sure we've still got video going on. Oh, beautiful video going in there. Now it comes out of there, I oh, so there's a contrast control. I think I'm going to have to print the data sheet out, this is just too hard. Okay, well I thought 1984 might be a bit early going by that plastic moulding for these TVs, and this data sheet's got it as 1988. Doesn't mean the chip wasn't out earlier then, but it was very common in the sort of Korean era TVs that came out around that time. Maybe that's one of the reasons they came out, but they were, must have sold millions and millions of these Toshiba chips, the TA7698. So many little TVs use them, or even bigger ones. They're just probably the most common jungle chip in history, really. And pretty much anything out of Korea, China, at least some of the Chinese stuff. But that Korean sort of era, it just, these got used in everything. I'm not so sure if the Japs, some of the things like Panasonic and that, made their own stuff in Sony, but more and more of the Japanese companies went to rebadging Korean stuff anyway, so it was in so many things. But what we got is pin 39, they call it inv inverted in or whatever. But that's the video, composite video comes in there. Goes to your contrast amp. It's got an out pin, which I think is meant to go back around to your chroma. As in colour section. You got like a delay line and bits and pieces. So I think it can't, just goes in there, gets the contrast adjusted and basically comes back out, goes back around, back into the chip somewhere else. But we should, I'm probably best to check if there's actually a video out there because possibly if this contrast amplifier is doing something wrong it's making the video down to nothing or something. And yeah, who knows, there is another video amp there. Video chroma vertical, oh that's the VCC, that was our pin 2. 12 volt for the whole chip, but it runs everything in the chip, I think. So if that's dead, you probably wouldn't have any vertical or anything running, really. Of course, it's got horizontal driver, vertical oscillator, vertical driver, so... Does pretty much everything, chroma, 
some video after the IF stage into RGB for the tube, or to the drivers of the tube, I guess. We should come out. Where do they come out? Matrix. Be around here somewhere. B minus Y out. That's right. I think it's got a Y out, like a chroma out as well. Where does that come from? That video amp. So it definitely needs that signal out of here to go back in somewhere. Because you've got your luminance out. Your blue minus. Luminance R minus and G minus. So that's out of the color matrix. Unicolor switch. Chroma amp color unicolor. Well, this does NTSC power and I think C cam as well you can get out of it. Well, there's your power NTSC system switch. Power NTSC matrix. System switch power NTSC. So there is a way of switching it. Don't think I saw many of these sets with these chips with NTSC on them, but they probably wasn't worth adding extra components for the Australian market or the general this part of Oceania or Asia or whatever that they were sending them to. So that's the main thing we need to probably look at pin 40 if something's coming back out. Maybe something going back in here, this clamp in, got a brightness control. Yeah, that's the, the just the VCC. So it must get back into pin 3 somewhere, possibly through another delay line. For the luminance, not sure what they do exactly. I think I saw a delay line in there somewhere. It's another thing we can check if there is. Is that the yeah, DLO1 down the front? Right down the front of the board next to the big connector there. I think that's a luminance. Or video delay line. Yeah, there's a colour delay line over here, DLO2. So yeah, we should have some video around there somewhere. I guess there's another place to look. But it comes out on what? 42... No, 40. So in on 39. We've still got video there. Tons of it. Oh yeah, it's coming out of 40. Let's have a look at that. I'm just going to go straight to that delay line. Nothing. 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 Oh, yeah, no, there it is. Ooh. Into the delay line and not out? Come on. That never happens. Oh, no, is it coming out? I'm just not making a good connection. So it is coming out of that luminance delay line. I was going to say, be rare for one of those to fail. I think they did in some old TVs. Occasionally you get no video and it was a failed Luma delay line. Those big old, they had a great big rectangular green one in some of the old rank arenas and other sets. I think I'm pretty sure I did replace one once for fail. You can just short the things out, I think, and you'll get some sort of picture come through. So that's there. So it goes back in on pin three, possibly. And there it is. Oh, what the hell is going on here? And it should come out on that uh, luminance out pin 23. And there's like a sinky pulse thing, but not any sort of stair pattern. You should still get something. What are the other? And we can go 22 is another one. That's as dead as it's just like some rubbish coming out of 22. I mean, we could have a failed T TDH if I mean, or TH if I always call them a TDA, these, but they're a TA. Toshiba, it'd be very rare for one of these to fail, but occasionally, like one in a thousand faults like this, maybe <laughs> you would actually have the chip faulty and not some external component, but they did die. I don't know if I've got any boards here I can just rip one out of. Already scrapped. I don't think... Did Samsung use these? Not in the chassis I got, I don't think. But maybe. But I do remember maybe I might have changed three or four of these chips in all the years that I was repairing stuff. Pretty rare. Super reliable. As long as they were run... The thing was designed right, then they would just go and go and go. But it's not looking good for this chip. I guess, well, we know it's coming out of there, so I don't think the contrast is turning it down. I guess the brightness control, I do wonder whether we've, it would be worth checking the pins where the brightness and the contrast go in, because a broken control there, 
could be something that causes a problem. We've got 0.2 volts. Doesn't sound good for the brightness. Yeah, well, if that's... Am I still connected to ground? Well, there's a problem already, I think. This is the sort of thing you've got to look for. Like I say, those TA chips... Sometimes it's just... With some faults, it's easier just to swap them over just so you don't have to consider it anymore. When, especially when you're learning to fix these things. And sometimes I would just go like, I'm no 99% it's not the chip, but I'm just going to change it so that I don't concentrate on it anymore as a possibility. Don't focus on it and get distracted by it. But that pin 4 has nothing. And the contrast is 41. Second last pin there. And it's doing something, not a lot. 6.8 to 7.3. But I think we can say that pot is at least vaguely connected to the thing. I guess I could look with the oscilloscope. On oh, what pin does it come out of? 40 and that's the other thing you just hook to the signal 41 40 and just see if you see any change and I'm not <laughs> so that's not a good sign you'd think you'd see something although that image is looking a bit weird at the moment I think we need to mm, why is the oscilloscope looking like that it's actually looking very smeary this signal so I'm not sure what on earth? I haven't, must admit, I haven't seen that before. The staircase pattern certainly isn't the best. I wonder if we've got some rubbish. Oh, is that coming out of the chip? That's smeary going in. I had it like just turned down in amplitude and frequency, so it was compressed. Yeah, that's quite clean. The signal coming out of there is very smeary. That's a nice staircase, which should just be literally like a staircase. There's a little bit of jitter or something there, which could be the oscilloscope or something. But that one out of pin 4040 looks pretty rubbishy. Let's have a look at the 12 volts going into this thing, I guess. Pin 2. Looks nice and clean. So we... Who knows what, whether that's just an anomaly there, or I've got a bad earth. Shouldn't be a bad earth, or it could be on picking up some rubbish, so we won't take too much notice if signals look, if they're there, but look a little bit off. It's not always a problem, sometimes it's just a time waster to even care about that. Where's our brightness control? Right there. Point two. Point two, point two. So, are we missing a voltage here somewhere? What, I guess I need to know what a brightness control, this is where a circuit of the whole TV is really handy because you can see what the control hooks to. I was going to actually have a look, I'm bound to have a circuit for a Korean TV somewhere that actually has one of these in it and you can just get a rough idea of how things are hooked up and what sort of voltages. Yeah, that's weird, that brightness control, whatever it's connected to. It looks like the purple wire, the grey wire, I'm not sure. I'm getting deja vu, because I think when I had that AWA one, I looked at some of this stuff. And we've got, this one's got the complication of a board in the way. I might have to remove that board. And try and find all these wires go down to that connector. I didn't put any shots on the connector or anything horrible, did I, when I resoldered it? We should be able to track pin 4 goes into a resistor, a link, a resistor. No, yes. Through a something, probably a link. Across here, across there, up there. Where on earth is it going? Is that a, oh, maybe we do have a sub brightness control. Or is that hooked to more than that? Let's just. Have a look. I'm seeing capacitors and stuff. Makes me wonder if we don't have a short to ground or something. Like that. Oh no, it's come good. Again, it'd be nice to know what these things are, but is that what we want? That 
seems to be some sort of resistor. It's definitely not fully connected to whatever that is. No, I think I followed the wrong thing, maybe. Now I'm going down here, down here to the fourth wire long, which is the orange, which comes up right next to the brightness control. No surprises there, I guess, because that would be the feed out of the brightness control. I reckon that should have a voltage up on that board, surely. I think this other little board just runs, it's got a connector going to the LED that flashes three wires, of course it's a dual red and green LED. That seems to be involved in that stuff, where's the other screw there? But I don't know for sure that's all it does, but it does say indicator on that board. It's got a couple of CMOS chips, so I think we can ignore that largely for the moment. If I can get it out of the way, I can ignore it. Okay, brightness. It has the... Whatever colour that wire is. So there's two wires there come into it. Which is the blue and orange. And one more wire is the second one up there, which is the grey. Blue, orange, grey. We need the orange. And the blue and grey are either side of it. So that was the fourth. So it's something going up to a resistor here. So it's the third, fourth, and fifth, basically. You know, if it wasn't so bright, you would expect it to be there. And someone's bypassed it with a resistor, and then it's got a diode to ground. Well, I'd assume we should have some sort of voltage there. I've just got to be careful I don't short this other board out. Well, I know what they are now, so I don't think I need to care. Without getting access to the pot behind anymore, I think we can screw that board back on at least temporarily. But I guess what I can quickly do is now we know what pins it is, firstly do a static test. So it's the third, fourth, and fifth. We have a low resistance and a fairly low resistance again, 500 and 400. Doesn't seem the best, but I don't know how this pot's actually connected. Now we should be pretty much short at one end. It's still 500. Oh, down to 189 there, maybe. Which I don't know which one's the wiper or whatever, so we've got no idea. But the fact the pot seems to be changing value, yeah, now it's low there and should be higher there, and possibly even higher there. Yeah, so it's only about a 1k pot or something. And I've got a resistor there. 2.3, I mean this could still be a faulty chip, could be that there's no voltage coming out or something, 5k there, a little diode maybe, so that heads to ground by a couple of resistors, that is the one, well that's why I assume that is the wiper because it goes back to the chip, and pin 3 to R259, is 2.2k, it goes across this next resistor, similar value, then through a link yep, to this bit here which is pin 2. So the 12 volts comes down through a chain into the, was that the grey wire I think, yep, grey wire, pin 3, that connector, so we should get a voltage going in there and then some of it being divided off by the pot and sent back into that chip. You would think. So where were we there? 
Yeah, 12 volts, which comes through that link called number 40. Yeah, down there, it's already down to 2.4 volts. And then there's that 0.2 volts. And nothing we do changes the 0.2 there. That resistor had resistance, but it's acting a lot like. Well, maybe that's. Yeah, why have we got nothing? It's like the pot does nothing. Yeah, we should be able to go to resistance. There's your problem, there's no resistance to ground, what the hell? Well, it doesn't need to be resistance to ground, I guess, because it's... Well, no, it well, goes through a diode here, doesn't it? Well, let's just check the other side of that pot. I'm not sure what we're looking at. 4.24, really? Hang on, we had 0 0.2, for, 0 0.2 volts there a minute ago. Ah, oh, what the hell's going on? Well, I don't doubt we've suddenly got volt any image coming out of this chip, but I guess we'd better check. Nope. I don't know what's going on there, that's got some weird image. A weird signal. But that voltage has gone up, why has it suddenly gone up? The worst thing is I can't see a thing on this tube. Oh, yeah now we've got a much, oh I can actually see the... Why am I getting a signal there? But I can see black and white bars on the screen. Oh, you've got to be kidding. As soon as you hone in on it, it works. Amazing. I'm still trying to work out why the voltage wasn't there. It's either something was short of the ground, or has it gone now? Yeah, it's back 4.25. <sighs> you little... It was almost a bit like that side of the pot was short of the ground. Just when I got to that bit, just check it, it <laughs> you've got the diode resistance or voltage drop, sorry, forward voltage drop, three volts there. Yeah, it was like something on the, the ground side was shorted out, pulling the rest down. I can't see what else it could have been. Amazing. Just amazing. Is that it? Not doing a lot of range, but I can't believe that. Just as you track the little so and so down, it this happens to me all the time. Or well, used to when I was doing this stuff. Just as you're about to get it. Well, what could it be? Son of a gun. Oh well. Let's have a look at that image on this thing, I guess, and see what we've actually got. Uh, can I look at the image on it? <laughs> Not sure how I'm going to do this. I'm going to just have a look around. Got a connector. Where were those resistors? Down here somewhere. And there's, that's the little diode. There's a resistor sticking up just below the colour delay line there. There's... Where was the other resistor? Here, yeah, little... I don't know what just happened. We know the pot seemed to be okay, so it had to be something there, but... No idea. 
Now I do need to get my mirror so I can actually see. Always need a mirror when you're working with a TV. Now am I safe to turn that on? I think I am. And will it work or will it not work? Oh, we've got a much brighter Rasta here with a rather green one, but with some video. I can adjust the level of that video there. Oh, there we go. Contrast up. Much better. Now, I do need to turn that back down because we've got retrace because I tweaked the screen up. Well, that is just highly annoying when they just fix themselves. Yeah, I've got an image. I better see if we've got some colour. Yeah, beautiful. Besides, it's green. Green tinted, that is. <sighs> so it was a bright, so I told you it wasn't the chip, or not likely to be the chip. I mean, no, it can't have been the chip because it was 12 volts going in. That's just a voltage divider, unless the chip was shorting it to ground or something weird, which I guess isn't impossible, but. Hmm, whatever it was has for now. decided to give us an image back and a very green one so I better tweak that up ooh I'm not sure we've got, have we got, oh we've got all the colours there because I just saw them on the colour bar ooh, man that tube is looking horrible interestingly the highlights or whatever actually pots on this actually work a lot better than that other one though that one doesn't seem to do anything at all But I can't seem to get a good colour balance. That's too red. With a slight green tinge. Where's my blue? There. So we've got plenty of blue. That is the highlights. That's the lowlights. Yeah, that's the green. Too much green. Then it gets too red. Oh, that's... So that's the green low lights. Why does turning that dot down there? We've got red only. Are we lacking blue down there? Heaps of red. Heaps of green. Other pot does zilch. That's probably the problem. So we still have another fault by the look of it. dust off there. Assuming that that is the blue. Yeah, it's weird because I thought it was all in the other set that I couldn't really see much difference when I turned those pots at all. Turn the red right down, green right down, and it's still kind of greeny and red. We've got plenty of blue in the highlights. I guess it's not much fun when no one can see the hell what I'm doing. But I'm just talking about the tint on the screen. Plenty of blue in the colour bar. Oh, good thing I've got the base off this thing because nothing seems to work. So I've got three potentiometers. Ugh. If I can see, oh, there's two of them. No. Yes. Oh, two up there. One, oh, one, two, three. RV 815, 814, 813. It's 813. Well, that feeds in, I don't know, because they've all got a common line. That can be the ground side, we should have a lead, lead, oh no, why not the, mm. that's not set up the same, oh, there's our blue transistor, and it's definitely hooked to the blue, but, that's got the, oh yeah, the centre's joined, that doesn't, ah, it's doing my head in, that is, because the other one's got two pins joined on the pot, that's got two pins joined on the pot, goes off, to the transistor, two pins joins goes off to the transistor, two pins joined on this other one goes 
to what looks like a common of all three of them. And then this one pin goes off via resistor to the transistor. <laughs> Why would one be hooked up differently? Again, that's where a circuit is handy because then you can see if it makes sense or not. Just looking at the board is not the best way to do it. We've got 2K. Oh, that's going to be the same to there because those two pins. Well, it's not. How can I have 3K to. What? 2K to one pin, 4K to the other pin, but the two pins are joined together. Is that dry jointed or something? Well, yeah, not real good. I'm not sure that's... Anyway, let's resolder it just to be sure. And then out of that, I guess we'll have to check the voltage is the best way, but we have a... k or so another resistor that uh, goes to the other blue adjustment pot that we know is working so I guess these two pots probably form a bit of a chain to the is it the base of the transistor well according to this it's the emitter but I think they might have actually put them oh, I could be on the emitter too I think they often did put them in there on the emitter to set the voltage there or the base could be could be labelled wrong on the board. Yeah, then it comes through here to there. That is really weird. Let me check that again. Let's go to some other points. And that resistor to there is 2k ohm. That resistor to there is 4k ohm. What the? You certainly see some weird stuff. The resistor are now, now saying 4k ohm. Well, make up your mind, fluke. 2k ohm to there. Or is it, oh, is it climbing? Oh, what the? Zero to there. 4k to there. 3k to there. <laughs> okay, so I resold all the joints on the pots doesn't make any difference so still that blue pot doesn't seem to do a thing now we want to see can I really measure it while I tweak it it's that point there 7.88 volts where is the pot Right under the tube, but I can't get to it, of course. Which one is it? That one. I swear something makes a weird noise when I do that, like it's arcing or something. Nothing. Yeah, something's... What is it? It's on the neck board or something. Focus connection. We've got a dry joint on there somewhere. Of course, it's not going to do it now because I'm onto it. Could just be a mechanical noise. Hmm, I'm going to put my finger without risking touching the horizontal or something. That's not it. You friggin' so there's nothing there. Come on, do something. Eight volts. That is pretty much ground. It's as if that pot is open circuit. Certainly acting or well, can't be the resistors open circuit because we've got the eight volts. All something smoking. The hell is that? Hot there. Well, the camera ran out of battery, but I kept going with this for a bit. Um, I found that the trim pot for the blue, I think it was, that wasn't working, was open circuit. 
Oh, where did I put the old ones? Oh, there they are. Open circuit between the two resistor pins there, and I think the other one as well, but I couldn't read the value on it. Uh, so I pulled out the next one. That also was open between these two pins, which is just a resistance element, but it did have the wiper still connected. So I pulled out the third one, and that said 5K on it. So I put three new pots in there, and it was all running fine, so I screwed it all back together, and then, of course, it went purple, and I was tapping on the board, and it was coming and going, and then it went for a while, and it's come back again. Now I've got no... I think it's the green adjustment it would be if it's purple. The pot I put in the middle there doesn't do a thing. So something's still wrong there. No idea where that smoke came from. It didn't do it again. After I changed those pots, switched it on, fine. So I guess something must have shorted out somewhere when I was fiddling around. Um, the other thing I quickly had a look at, even though it wasn't that quick, is this tuning part. Because when I went to put it back in, all the plastic broke. So that's very brittle. But I did manage to loosen it off so it actually does work. I did put just some um, RP7 in the shaft there and a bit of oil and did get it looser, but it still wasn't really loose. So I actually pulled the whole shaft and pot to bits. Turns out it's got some ball bearings and stuff in there which I lubed up, but it's still reasonably tight. So I think these are made to be like that. The other one is the same. So they're not meant to be super loose probably so the tuning sort of works a bit better without sort of moving too quickly or something. But then the issue I found is when I tune this in, I wasn't getting colour and then it would sometimes come up. And I now sort of find that if I detune it a bit, I get the colour to come up and then it drops out when I'm properly tuned in. So there's some other issue in the IF. The other thing that was playing up is this monitor TV switch, which I put some cleaner in before. That's still very dicky getting the AV up. So I might swap that with the AFT switch, which is probably not much better condition, but they looked to be the same switches. So I might swap them and see if that fixes it. But I guess I can, I think this is ready to go. Once I put the power on the bench again. And see if it's still purple, which it probably is. I think what am I on at the moment? Back on the monitor would help. Yeah, I'm on monitor. No, it actually doesn't look too bad. Where's the grayscale? Oh no, it's definitely purple. So it got quite a good purple tint to it. And yeah, I found one tweaking that pot, so I don't know they're only second-hand trim pots I had lying around, so whether that pot is dicky or whether I forgot to solder it in properly or something, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be loose in the board. Absolutely nothing on the green. So it looks like I have to take it out of the case again. And I've now got this sort of floating around. If I go to RF... And... Yeah, it's not going to be easy to juggle like this, probably, but... I am on grayscale at the moment, so I better put that back on the colour. But I had a lot of trouble getting the colour to come up. Works perfect on AV, but I think when I de yeah, detune it a bit, we get colour. You can hear that the that actually did, I don't know if the AFT pulled that back in. I think that's my fingers on the pot possibly doing that. Maybe not, I don't think I'm actually touching any of the terminals, but something weird. It could be something with the AFT is pulling it off channel or something. No idea what's going on. Turning the AFT off I don't think makes any difference. Well, that's almost locked in. Yeah, when I take my fingers off the pot, it seems to... You see the audio's out there. Unless there is an issue where the audio's out of whack with the vision or something. It's not a clear picture though, really. That's actually locked in quite well, but I think if I let go of that, you know, it's going to stay there now. That's actually locking in now. First time I did it, and then it was actually very hard to get the video up, so maybe there's some other... That switch actually seems quite good at the moment. But I could not get a picture up until I really messed around with it. It's just sort of flicking a bit. It's actually quite stable though, unless there is some other issue with this thing, which wouldn't be surprising. But yeah, the RF is not real good. I don't care about the RF too much, but it would have been nice after fixing the tuning. If it would tune in nicely. It's almost like when you hold it a certain way, it works. But I think if we flick the colour off... 
yeah, back on doesn't come up. That was basically what it was doing. And then sometimes you'd go to the red screen and it would lock back in. Geez, the focus looks a bit out on that. Another thing I think I noticed was that this one, when you turn the colour right up, the white goes quite dark. Yeah, when I turn it back down a bit, it actually gets brighter, I think, as you turn the colour down here, yeah, then it goes this horrible colour. I thought we had another issue until I turned the colour down. It's like it's oversaturating and stopping the white being white. Where's our brightness? May still be a little bit on the bright side, but I think we're pretty good on the grayscale. Can turn down some of those bars. Yeah, that's kind of right. Might be still a little tad high, but better slightly on the bright side. And that other set that I fixed earlier, that looks like I looked it up on eBay, and that was meant to be just a dim picture on that one. So they did say there was a fault with it. I couldn't remember if it had a fault or not. But I've got the issue of this trim pot. So after a lot of messing around, still haven't got this thing going, but it is sort of getting there. Get rid of this power supply for the 50th time. Uh, what have we got? The audio is still connected there, better be careful of that. Especially near the tube. So, and that was a real pain to get this one back together getting this bottom cover to clip on. Seems like something's loose in there somewhere. Just a bit of that black plastic I think that broke off. Yeah, when I put this pop back in and tighten it up, first one part, the bit that was attached to it originally broke, and then this little pin was holding it on, the little bit to stop the pot turning, and when I tried to tighten it back onto that bit, again, that broke as well, so really needs this whole bracket replacing. You could probably mount a bit of metal or something on there, but it's also got the spring rusted off as well. This dial cord's still a bit loose. That had a couple of turns that's meant to be in this middle bit here. It's meant to have a spring attached to it. I'm not sure if that's meant to be torn there or if it hooked over the other end. I think that's just a knot they tied, but that should have tension on it, which it doesn't. It still works, moves the dial up and down, but not the best. But RF isn't a big priority. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to unscrew the board again and try and separate these two bits of case. And it was yeah, really difficult to get in. I think I actually had to slice a little bit of plastic off under there because the bottom part has got a couple of flat bits on it and they were actually cutting into the, the plastic on the other bit. And I think this plastic's a lot more... A lot harder than it was originally, so that's probably why it doesn't want to bend a bit and give. But I had a real fight trying to get that together. Well, I don't know if I undo those screws to separate these bits, I don't think, but... Yeah, we've really got to prise those bits off from underneath. Which leaves a few screwdriver marks and stuff. Really not happy. There it goes. Quite a difficult one to separate. So it's not going to look the best under here when I'm finished with it. There it goes. But much harder to get on than take off, that's for sure. And we need to unclip the board. But yeah, I'm starting to, starting to regret touching a day wheel again. They were often a bit of trouble, but admittedly this one's so old you can't really blame it in a way. But it'd be interesting to see why this trim pot... Oh, it was my fault, I did leave a, a solder joint unsolder, there you go. So obviously, that's what I thought when I was tapping, I thought I wonder if I... Because I had three of them to solder at once and I must have just missed one. Oh, at least it's... It's not the TV's fault, I was going to say, this. it's got to be me missing one. Yeah, very hard to really see them. There's three pots here, 813, 814, 815. There's some of your colour adjustments, and they're all 5K pots. And two of them were open circuit, the others look terrible, they're all kind of 
corroded or tarnished or something. And yet yeah, two of them, you couldn't even see what was stamped on it. I suspected it was either 5 or 10k, because you could sort of make out the k, but... Not very well done, I was my own fault there. But of course it worked perfect when I tested it. Loose. I've got a couple of these other joints while I'm at it. They don't look the best in this light. And as soon as I put it back together, it started playing up. But that's a relief, really, because I thought, what else could possibly be wrong? Any of those need doing. For some reason, some of these joints look a bit worse today. But now I think that's it. And that brightness, that's right, this had the intermittent brightness issue where it had zero picture, and that has not returned, so... I don't know what on earth was playing up there. I haven't managed to get that to play up again. So it had something that smoked. It had a brightness issue where we had no picture. And both of them corrected themselves. But it's easy enough when you've got these boards floating around to just have something short out briefly and make it smoke. So you've got to be super careful. Oh, it does go on a bit easier now. Oh, well, it's much easier. Cutting those bits off must have helped. But I still had trouble yesterday getting it back in there. Whoops, I'm gonna get this board in the right spot. I think that was all I had to do, wasn't it? Oh, this, well, the switch seems to be working now, so what do I do there? Maybe just leave it for now. The other thing I was thinking of doing is looking at that AWA one and see if I can copy how the AV is set up. So I can at least cut into that and add AV input to it. Because again, I don't care about the RF side of things. I think the RF actually works in it. It works on RF as it is. It's still won't have a power supply built in, but it's certainly possible to add an external one. That one also didn't have this audio connector, which takes out the audio. So maybe that chassis is different enough it didn't have that. I would almost assume this main board's pretty much the same in that set. But, who knows. Maybe they got rid of whatever that was. Might chuck those bits of plastic out, there's not much I can do with that. One thing I was thinking is, should I swap this tuning part over with the one out of that AWA one so that it's a remote push button type tuner, which could possibly be done. But then you do have a few differences in the cabinet. But let's just see if that at least... I'm sure that'll fix our purple issue. I think the focus looking at that probably needs a bit of a tweak and a few other things probably. Probably a little bit less brightness. And hopefully this thing's going besides whatever issue it has in the tuning, but it's never going to be used on RF. I don't think it's worth going too far with that. Especially without a menu, if I knew where you would what adjustments or what here, one of those must be the automatic fine tuning and there's probably an automatic gain control and a few other things. Could be something to do with one of those. Wouldn't be gain control, I don't think, but there may even be some of these little IF type cans in the colour section, they probably are related to the colour, but without knowing what they are, I'm not going to start just randomly tweaking things. Not worth the trouble. You're bound to mess something up. Sometimes you can just tweak them a little bit each way, which I think I actually might have tried on a couple of those trim pots. Oops, there goes the plastic on that, which was I think already half broken. So the plastic's definitely getting... Where did the bit go? Oh, it's falling out there. So that's the clip that, old, that held that on. That's broken off. Plastic's getting brittle. These TVs have lived well beyond what their expected lifetime was, I guess. Not like these were high-end ones. And you can just sort of tell that by looking at the way they're built. But at least they, I think they've got a fairly good tube in them. It does say made in Japan because a lot of the other countries, they, it probably wasn't wor even worse setting up a factory because they did, sold so few of them. They were a high volume thing 
not as high volume as like a 14 inch or a 20 inch or something. So they probably just got them from the Japanese because they already set up to make them. I've got heaters coming up. Oh yeah, we're back. Got a nice green tint to the screen. So that'll be that pot working again. Try not to short anything and don't touch yourself on anything live. Got to be careful because of the power supply, even though it's all low voltage, thankfully. It's a little bluey. Be able to see on this angle without, oh, you have plenty of blue there. Probably tweak the blue up, try not out. Set the same adjustments. Oh yeah, way too much blue. Probably should turn the brightness up a bit on that. What have we got there? Some sort of interference band or something. Don't tell me we've got another thing showing up. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. I think that other one had a couple of bands going down the screen by the look of it. Ooh. They seem to vary with what I'm doing here too, what the... Got a lot of blue there. Oh, I can't even see where the screwdriver's going now. Oh, there's one reason not to turn the light off. There it is. Now to work out exactly where the exact point is. I think we need to do the, I think they're the highlights and these others are the low lights. Are they the highlights? Hard to tell sometimes. But we might as well check all the pots are working. I probably, that was the other thing I was thinking which I forgot again is I probably should have changed the other two pots if three of them are shot yeah, vertical hold, wrong one, where's colour? Oh, well, we're on grayscale, that won't help. So colour even delays a little bit in video mode there. That's relatively dim, can I go a little bit, tweak the screen control just down a little bit more. Because that's plenty of brightness. Yeah, I can see some slight banding there. Yeah, that's full contrast. Oh, grayscale. We don't want full colour. It's way too bright, but that's not a bad little picture. What's the. Oh, I've got to do the focus too, I think. Perfect purity. Yeah, that's definitely out on the focus, I think. The dot pattern is usually the best one. Oh, yeah, much sharper. Can be a little tricky, but yeah, if you can see all the little rows of dots on the picture tubes, especially in these ones, they are not the highest resolution. The dots are quite large relative to the the picture tube. That's actually a rather good geometry on this one. So ironically, this beaten up set's turned out quite good, although I think that's, oh, that's this pattern generator. It's got very big squares on that side. They might be a little bit bigger on there too. This silicon chip one is not perfect in its geometry and it's almost like the centering's out. I think this normally does center reasonably well, but it has bigger white and black. But I don't think I'm going to tweak anything else. We've got a couple of, what have we got? Eight old vertical height. I don't think there's much else to tweak in there. I think we'll leave it at that. I'll do something to keep that pot in place, I guess, so it can't short on anything. But so far, so good. That's probably the longest time I've had it running without anything obvious showing up. Yeah, much sharper picture, which is a good start. Yeah, it switches. As you don't touch it, it seems alright, but it was. At first I couldn't get it to come up at all, so maybe, don't know. It's fixed itself sitting around overnight, I think. Yeah, UHF, VHF seems to work. 
That works. Flashing LED there. I'll plug the RF back in, I'll say I did go by the amount of interference. But yeah, the dial cords come off. Hmm. And I don't seem to be getting the channel. Let's pick up here somewhere, is it? Yeah. You see, I've lost you at um, pattern generator altogether. Wait up. Oh, it's falling out of the front of the pattern generator. Typical. But always something like that. Still no colour. Perfect colour picture. Oh, well, it's at least locked in for a minute there. I'll do that on camera because I probably won't see it again. That's through RF. Let's turn it off. And yeah, turn it back on. Nothing. Don't think it's a button generator doing anything weird. And yeah, there's the slightest little hum bar there. Could be because we've got the thing to pieces, in pieces, and leads going all over the place. Hmm, so I think that one's basically done. Other than I wouldn't mind looking at the other one. Let's get the mirror out of the way. And I think I have to look at the other one of these. Maybe I should put this one back together because I'm pretty sure those pots are faulty in that one because I couldn't really get any adjustment out of those colour pots so I wonder if they're all shot as well what am I going to do with this thing? maybe if I wrap the dial cord around for starters that just had like a double turn you kind of got to get that bit that bit should go in there somewhere you could see the double turn in it before, now it's fallen off. Doesn't look the same. And I should go around. Well, it depends where everything's sitting, I guess, as to where the double bit of cord is. Uh, now I've got that in the way. That'll just do for, for now. Of course, right near the power switch, which doesn't help. And I can't even really cable tie it on there, can I? Maybe if I cable tie it to that. I think that's going to have to do. The shaft is still pretty horrible. The only problem is, I'm not going to be able to put the knob back on it, am I? It's going to look a bit dodgy, even though the knob's not the best. It'd be nice if from the outside the knob... I wonder if I can cable tie it to that bit. Big cable tie on the floor. If I go under the earth strap, or at least part of it. Can I sort of hold that in? Yeah, something like that. Don't want to take that earth strap too far off the tube though, because it should still earth all right. And that does have to earth the aqua dag around the outside of the tube. Otherwise we'll get sparks and God knows what happening if we're not careful. From the EHT. That should be in about the right spot to hopefully slide the knob back on. Yeah, I might even put this one back together because I'm kind of finished with this one hopefully. I sure hope so. It'll need a good test run. Kind of ironic this one. Oh, I didn't got to screw the antenna socket back onto this plate. Oh, and you've got to watch this audio unplugs. Because you put it all back together and there's no audio because the little single wire there escapes. 
As soon as you move this back enough, it pops straight off again. Now, yeah, where's the other little screw? That's not it. Yeah, where are all the screws? There it is. I think I'm missing a few cabinet screws here, Andy, somewhere though, no doubt. Man, that's some pretty long screws for the socket. And just gotta be careful because I'm already seeing things I'm trying to move the uh, pitcher tube socket. And they're very easy to break the end off these tubes if you're not ultra careful. And that's the end of the TV. Well, I do have that AWA one, I guess I could pinch a tube out of since that sets less valuable than these ones in many ways. But better not to if you can avoid breaking the things. Ah, that damn handle. Careful. Tennis socket doesn't want to go on. Up you go. And then we've got to get these sockets on the side end. Ah, that handle is really annoying. Always we don't want it. And I have a wire at the side. Get that top bit clipped in. Also need to try and get the knob on. What well, I can see is move to one side of course. And there's a plastic bit under that was lying around here somewhere. And there it is. Oh there's the other knobs, uh other screws. That'll do. If that just stays there, oh, of course that piece hasn't gone in. That'd be right. Can I sneak that in? Oh, God, that does not wanna there it is. Really, not known for their well-fitting cabinets today, we ones. But most of these little TVs are pretty fiddly. If it still works after this, then it should be right, I reckon. Oh, did I plug that wire? I did put the wire back on, I think. Oh well. So I should have left the good antenna on this one, I guess. <laughs> oh well. So the AV sockets are all pretty corroded and stuff on the outside, so it's certainly a rough one. But let's see if it actually works with the cover on. I should get the CD going again and we'll put some music in there so we can test the audio. As long as the AV works, I'm happy. Yeah, right. Right. Of course, the volume's got to 10 every time. Contrast. Brightness, at least if you can get the black to light up a bit, you've got plenty of brightness normally. This doesn't have the best range, but I think that should be okay. Vertical hold locks in all right. This has got better purity than the other one. It doesn't seem to get as upset as easily. And now the yoke looks slightly out of whack. <laughs> it is just ever so slightly tilted, I think. But you're not going to get perfection out of one of these things, I don't think. And I did check the yoke wedges look like they're alright. I think they probably came with the Japanese tubes, so they're probably better than the usual Daewoo ones. Oh, well, I think we'll call that one fixed for now. Okay, just undone the cover on the other nicer, cleaner one. That's right, it's got someone's service date in there. Let's see. I guess I should almost plug the audio into that, but... Is that the pattern generator doing weird stuff? Oh god, we've really got something weird going on here, but 
Uh, is it the pattern generator? That's no, nah, it's got weird bars on it as well. What on earth? Oh, these Daewoo things, they're just a heap of fun. So I haven't run that for a couple of days, and it looks like it's got a major video fault. There's probably some more shonky caps. I wonder if that's that same. The other thing I was going to do in this, I thought, is I should replace the same capacitor that failed in the other one, now that we know it's a problem. That picture's gone silly. I haven't plugged in the right thing, have I? Monitor video in. Yeah, that's really unhappy. The fact it shows up on the snow shows there's something very weird going on there. But let's see if I can get the grayscale to adjust at all, because it didn't. It actually came in alright with just the other pots, but these other three didn't seem to do a thing, but. It's making it go red there. Sort of does nothing and then goes very a little bit red at the end, but it's not as red as you would ex expect. The other one had much more range. That one does absolutely nothing that I can see. So it's the same one, the blue one seems to be out. And that's the third one, is it? Oh, what was it? The one I was just doing. Hey, green does nothing, blue does nothing. Definitely was in that one, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, might, there might be a slightest change, but nothing serious going on there. AFT shouldn't do anything. Wow. Yeah, so this has got some weird problem going on. But I did notice a little bit of seeming ripples before but nothing like this my god that is just going to town I mean, look at that on the red screen my god what on earth is it doing <laughs> check that out I've got to give it to these ones for doing some pretty crazy stuff out here look at the massive ripple bars I guess I should check the 12 volts is still working in the power supply, but this one had the good power supply. Wow, that's just crazy. So I've got an issue in the video stage, or it's maybe that same thing again. I'm going to check the power supply first. Let's just make sure that hasn't gone silly. I did have it all tweaked up nice, but it's a day loose, so who knows if it's still running properly. Slightly high at 13 volts, but it's not low. I can't imagine that's causing any problems. I probably should tweak it back to... It was set to 12, but you know, that's like I say, these TVs are pretty dodgy. And now we're going to do high again. It seems to flick quickly from one to the other. Interestingly, it has settled down a bit. Oh no, it's back. I think something's warming up in there, so I think we've got a dud cap. And that voltage... So this is doing similar to what the other one did. The voltage varies as the pitch is flickering. So I wonder if it's the exact same cap but not as far gone maybe so I guess we'll have to do the usual remove all the power supply stuff and a little speaker wire there ah oh, the antenna socket Out and it's going to suddenly shoot out. And you don't want things suddenly moving around little picture tubes like that.
with the other screws anyway. This should release. Okay, power supply is gone. But I think I'll change that cap anyway because if we know it's a dud in the other one, it's probably on its way around this one. It does actually look, that's the one there. The plastic has shrunk back on it. And we've got to check out why these pots, I'm assuming these are probably open. They're much better condition looking than the other ones, but maybe they're just dodgy pots generally, regardless of the conditions. Maybe it's some other problem, but I can't imagine I've got two colours, at least two that don't do a thing. And it's not that. come up on this one. Maybe I should remove the tube first. Or at least lift it up a bit so I can press the tab and lift the board up a bit. And it's got the board at least loose. I'm going to pop the bottom off again. I think these are just made so you've got to basically mark them. Unfortunately, you can't really get them off without some damage. Well, let's flip this round. It's easy to work on it flat like that. And now I can't remember where anything is. That's the trim pots. Not the world's greatest soldering, but I don't think you could really measure them in circuit either. They just Cut up some random readings across them. Well, that's not so random. 3K is probably fairly good. Well, the only real way to test it is you can just unsolder two pins while they're still on the board. So they may go off value or something because because these have got two pins joined together if at least two of them are joined they may still work a bit of track came off there and i've got my soldering iron holder attached to the soldering iron as likes to have one of these okay sometimes I was able to see, look at that, it's possibly measuring like 600k or something. So these must be a bad patch, a bad batch of pots. Not a bad patch of bots. Now which one was it? Middle one. Oh, it actually stuck to the screwdriver somehow. I was expecting that to drop straight off and I now I can't even get it off. So as soon as that comes off the board, that's going to drop and hang in the wiring somewhere. So just measure across these. The resistance element of 5k should be across there. And it's 4 meg, so these are just junk. Possibly we've got something, because... Well, these ones we know are probably open. I reckon the one that still works. So, there you go. It's just as bad as the other one. Very rare you ever got bad trim pots back when I was still servers and this stuff on a regular basis, so who knows? Maybe it's a debut thing with this particular model. But this one's been in much better environmental conditions. So the other one, fair enough, it's someone hasn't looked after it, it's a bit rusty, it's probably been in the damp or salty environment or greasy air in a takeaway shop or something. Near the cookers or something, but yeah, you can't really blame Daewoo for that, but this one looks in very nice clean condition. There's another one. So I don't think we can blame environment for this one. Something's still holding on there. I've got to be a bit careful here. I'm sort of holding it up with the board, which is a bit naughty. Because you're putting too much force into the board potentially, and something might give way. And there's the other one. So 
so let's have a look. I'll probably measure the one I already did, but open circuit. I don't really care if the wiper is connected or not, even though it does sort of help it work. Open circuit to 30 mega ohms or something. None of these are working very well. Worst thing is I've got to try and find four, three more pots in a big tub of yeah, that's six megs or whatever, so they're all shot. No one is shocked by that finding. And where was that capacitor? What did I say it was? C is that one, I think. Yeah, that one there. I might just short it out to make sure since we just had it powered. Should really use a resistor, but chances are it won't be charged in this case. And it's only a little one. Oh no, actually, I lie. I think it's the one next to it. We'll check both of them anyway. That one. 425, maybe. Right, which one's. That's 426. Yeah, 425, 426. I don't know. It's one of those, I think. That's what happened last time. Is that actually a electrolytic? Oh, that's saying that big one's open circuit. Oh, that's that, um... Come on, that's the yoke coupler. That can't be open circuit. Oh, that one measures okay. Oh, come on, that was that big bipolar cap, I think. Oh, it's saying it's open, but I doubt it is, because we wouldn't have a yoke. We would have horizontal collapse or something. It's on the horizontal or vertical, I think a lot of the time they're on the horizontal, or is it just this joints are so terrible? They're like coated in something, I think. I don't think I'm making connection to it. I think this board was the one that was making funny noises. I cannot get heat into that joint. What is going on here now? Yeah, there's some horrible... It could be coming from the capacitor, I guess. Maybe I should remove it and have a look. That solder is really weird. Kind of gone crystalline, or... Ah, it's probably that brown glue on the other side. Is that what's eating through? Oh, it does have brown glue, so that might be something to do with it. Well, that pin's loose. There goes the other one, so we might need to clean this board off on the above anyway. Because the brown glue is doing bad. Yeah, look at the brown glue all under the cap. The yeah, leads almost look corroded or something. <sighs> but I think that's just the doing of the brown glue rather than the cap itself. I reckon we, we'll be able to measure it now. It's actually eating into the aluminium a bit, I think, there. In a perfect world, you'd probably replace that, but... If you can still get them... Someone's bound to sell them. Oh, has this thing gone to sleep again? Thanks, Electronics Australia. Yeah, that's fine. But definitely we want to dispose of... The, oh, look at the great big lump of brown glue there up against that inductor which I took out of the other set anyway God knows where that went hopefully all over the bench not inside the TV everywhere but yeah that's stuck to that inductor rather well might just cut what I can off with the side cutters I think it started off as a yellow glue and then goes a dark brown and then starts absorbing moisture. I'll get it off around the pins of that cap. <sighs> I think that other cap I might take out anyway. Won't have to replace it since it's a known troublemaker. And it does look like it's been hot. I forgot what it was. Was it a 470.25? Looks a little corroded on one pin, but that might not be the case. Oh, it is still running, is it? Ah, zero. That still seems to be fine, that one. 
but yeah, it's an old cap. A 4716, I like. So these don't seem to be the issue with our hum bars on the screen. So there's something else out there. Maybe it is the actual cap in the power supply. I oh, know this was the one that had the caps changed in the power supply, wasn't it? Certainly looks like a major power supply type issue, but who knows? Alone in the hole. Oops, dropped it right at the last second, of course. And if anything moves while it's setting, you definitely want to resolder it in case you've just created a nice potential dry joint. That's all good. And we need some 5k pots before we worry about anything else. I guess I'll just go over. There are a few other electrolytics around this part of the world. Well, we've got two in the vertical. I resolder the vertical transistors in this, didn't I? So let's... Go over those, which are, I think that's one of them. I'm going to that, no, that's why it measures open circuit, because it's a green cap or something. Point one. I'm sure we'd have more issue with the vertical if that was what was faulty. I don't think there's many others in here, well, besides lots of little ones. We've got one up the back here, could be something. There's another one next to that one. I don't think we're going to find anything here, but you never know. There's a 4.7 something there, so that probably feeds the tube or something. I should have really discharged that before I checked it. There's another one there. 4.7 probably isn't the best, but that'll be a high voltage, I think. Yeah, 3.3, 250. There's another larger one over here. No. So I don't know if we've got a power problem. What else have we got? There's a couple over in the color section, or IF section here. C116 there. Oh, now we've got the leads caught under it. Fine, and I saw another one here somewhere. Where are you? Over near the delay line, C238. Fine. There's a few small ones and stuff, but I don't think that's our issue. So a couple more joints, it really almost wants old border soldering, but other joints that aren't perfect here. I'll just go the end pins on that chip. Okay. Yeah, well, it definitely looks like a filthy supply line somewhere. As that transistor doesn't look the best. Ooh, that was dry as. I'm not sure what I'm resoldering here, but something around the IF maybe. That is quite a bad dry area. What is that? Q603, six, oh, that's D601, Q602603, that's probably more the audio or something. Yeah, no, nothing obvious there, so we'll change those pots. I guess what I could do, maybe I should hook this one up to the power supply again and see what it runs like with the bench supply feeding it. 
12 volts and we can go to ground for starters I think it was one on this side from memory yep one facing me Ooh, something. whoa well nice little bit of smoke here did I put maybe I did put that cap in the wrong way not according ah oh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I must have mistook. My eyesight must be getting worse because I must have mistook the the um, cap label for the negative marking on the board. No, well, it's always fun to get a bit of an explosion out of something. Let's hope it didn't damage anything else. I can't even find it on the board now. Oh, there. Oh, well, that's what a cap looks like when it goes bang. And I did check that I had it the right way, I thought, but actually that inductor wants well I think I should have soldered that before, because that's the one with the round glue on it. Oh well, there goes a new cap down the drain. Just be careful if you unsolder these. I'm just touching it with my finger that it isn't too hot. Because sometimes they are very hot. Okay. It's very hard, but yeah, that would be the negative of that big track, and I had it the other way around. Oh, I haven't desoldered, what the hell? But that's why I always check them, but I saw that last time I looked, can't really tell that from the diagram under the board. Oh yeah, no, I stuffed up. I saw a what, what looks like a white, in the right light with a shine on it, it looks like a white band, but it's actually just the C425 label. So let's get negative to the right side. And hopefully I haven't blown the horizontal output or anything. You never know when you do something like that, it didn't sound too happy. And of course it would be the time I put a power supply in that doesn't have a fuse or anything on it. Not that that would have probably prevented that from happening. But it might have saved something else. Let's check the horizontal output. I think it's alright. Hmm, that pin should be shorter, shouldn't it? Oh well, try again. Take two. So, what do we want? Power supply ground on the tuner. Now I should be on this side, and I can hear it running, try and attach that. Got a flashing LED, I can hear the horizontal running, I don't see a picture. No, oh, well, because we're on AV probably. Do we have a picture? Where's my AV? Nope, no bloody, oh. oh no, it's not on VHF, I don't need to worry about it. Ooh, smoke. What's that coming out of? Is that that diode? Something looks a bit dark there. I'm just going to be careful, and if I touch it, because your fingers never feel it. Yeah, that's hot. Bloody hell, so we're blown a diet or something that it feeds into, which is where? D401, maybe? That would be it. D401, right there. Does that feed the tube or something? Does it go up a wire somewhere? Just goes from bad to worse. I'd say whatever's there is shorted somewhere. Where's the ground? I 
this is a negative uh, it's impossible so it seems to go from 38 and it comes up here somewhere is it out of the line output yeah so that's the line output which came to where oh, i've lost it now here so that should be an input to that that should be right on the other side of it so it's going to measure short because line output transformer yeah, the diode's still alright so if I I haven't hooked the tube up wrong or something have I it goes to an X which is a wire right next to it that wire X is a yellow wire it comes across down here oh, so this goes to the vertical stage I think So we've got a short vertical output or something. Ooh, that seemed a bit low. Point one. Yeah, it's all right now. Yeah, I think that's just a capacitor or something. Hmm. I was going to check, do we have a vertical collapse or something? I wouldn't be surprised if I had, I had to watch this before, the Aquadag touching, well that shouldn't have been, yeah, it could have been. Depending on where I had things sitting, you just got to be so careful. When they're apart like this, yeah it wouldn't have been hard to do something stupid like that. I don't think that's running, is it? It's pulling power. Yeah, I think I must have shorted the vertical onto the tube to make that diode. So we've got a perfect picture now. So whatever was causing that ripple, We've got a greeny tin, so that's probably a sign that something's changed. It must have been. I think I might have almost done that before. So I think I touched. That's why I don't, do not like running them like this. Normally I would have it face down. Yeah, now I've got red. We've got green. Oh, that's a perfect gray scale there. Blue. Let's see the brightness. That's contrast. I think this one's a little bright now too, maybe. Uh, it is. I thought I got this one just right. But now that we've changed things, maybe they, those trim pots have made things different. I wonder if that's why the picture was dark. It could be something that silly. This could have had a dark picture because those pots were open circuit. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, but it hasn't really come up super different to before, but it's a bit different. It's definitely gained some brightness, I think. Well, there you go. So the weird thing is it was still the colour balance pretty right, although I think this one was originally out a bit. I think this one was purple as well from memory. Yeah, this one makes the white go dark coloured when you turn the colour right up as well. So those trim pots are all cactus. Yeah, I reckon I must have shorted that vertical onto the Aquadag. That's probably why that other one started smoking as well. Maybe I did the same thing. And then it came right, so I was probably just frying that diode. I guess really I should replace it, but it'll probably be alright. So I fixed that. What else was I here to do? I've got to check this AV board really and compare it to that other TV. I still got to find something else I was going to do, but I forgot what it is now. Change the cap. 
No, I think that was it. Though, what I do have to do, of course, is I might just put this bit back together. We know that bit will run. We do have to check the power supply out of this TV, that's what I was thinking, because we still don't know if we've got a ripple issue. Maybe those caps are changed to no good. I can still work on that board even though I can't. Yeah, so that's that brown wire I think in the other one I was thinking yeah, is two brown wires. No, one goes to this board so that doesn't tell me much but I get a feeling, geez, do I need to... I think I can work the other one out as far as its AV connections with the bottom back on this. I just don't really want to clip this all back together if I don't if I'm gonna to have to pull it apart again, but I don't know that I do. That's gone. Very hard to hear this one. Oh yeah, we're back to ripple. Yeah, horrible picture again. So there's something in this power supply shot. Possibly just the capacitors. But of the, the ones that someone fixed before and were working fine last time and now seem to be shot. So maybe just having voltage on them, you just don't know with the chemistry and these things, whether having them hooked up for a bit has done something weird to them. <sighs> what a use that earth joint is. Uh, can I hook this cover? Wow, that is some serious ripple, I think. We got like, God, how many volts is that? Two, nearly four volts of hum on there. According to the oscilloscope, so that is not good. We won't run it like that. That's just crazy. What has changed? Like I say, you just don't know with this stuff. I'm gonna have to pull that board off. That's why I probably shouldn't have plugged the degaussing in. These things are just a endless list of faults it seems and probably if I give these things a good run it may be the case that it something else fails in it. Just from being used for the first time in a while. But this is going to end up being like a four hour video of all the things going wrong with these things. And then I'm just here, I'll just give them a few days run, I guess, before I bother editing up the video. Might as well give it a good run. And see if any other smoke comes out or anything. I'll get this nut off the power socket as well. So I think I already had this one out once. That's what's really annoying, is it didn't play up. It seems to be the case of this thing, you do something, it doesn't play up. Next minute it plays up. Oh, it's another screw there. One hiding next to the transformer. I don't think the other one had that one. So maybe I didn't have this one a bit. Yeah, it's got five screws in the aluminium. Pretty sure the other one didn't have five screws in the aluminium. So that one must have been apart at some stage as well. So I've either got like a shorter transistor or something, or more likely... God, if those caps were replaced, it was a long time ago. What the year did it say? 96 or something. And yeah, these very dirty looking solder joints and stuff on this. In fact, oh god, that one's got a bloody dry joint on it, hasn't it? Damn close, I hope that wasn't someone, some tech soldering there. Are they original caps? They look like those blue Panasonic type, which I don't think the other one had in it, but I'm not opening up again to find out. I'm sure all the caps on this board look different colour, that doesn't mean it's not just a different batch. That's what I want. What SA meter? I guess actually before I do that, I might as well get the moulding meter and just see if I've got voltage. On any of this stuff we shouldn't have because the TV was running 
Should have discharged with the solder joint on that one and that one are both pretty horrible. And sometimes these bad solder joints are due to a, a faulty cap starting to pull itself off the board or something. They're all fine. So, let's just resolder them. Where did the other old solder go? That's looking a lot better than it was. That one almost looks like it's barely joined, but it does seem to, have, seem to be joined where there is actual solder, which there wasn't much. But I hope no one replaced it and left joints like that in it. That one was soldered all right. That could be something else. There is another little electro there. I guess we should check. And I'll just resolder these transistors, I think. Because, yeah, the solder joints in this are not the greatest. Well, that all seems to be fine. A shorter cap should have blown a fuse or something. A shorter diode, I mean. Now let's just check that other little. I think that's another little electrolytic. 0.98. Bound to be fine. What value is it, really? It's 100 microfarad. Might be a bit low for one of those, but it is a low voltage, so it's probably okay. Certainly not open circuit. Check none of these transistors are shorter or anything weird. What is that green lacquer stuff? I'll just check the main. Well, that should measure shorted somewhere because that's got a 10 ohm resistor across it. As long as it's 10 ohm, then it's fine. I can think we can say the transistor's okay. So why does this thing play up? And is it still playing up? Very weird. Do not want to let you get away with getting these things going easily. That's, on. That's terrible. Five volts of division, there's four divisions. Where on earth is that coming from? That can't be right. I've just got to be careful of that 240 volts there. There's not even a good place to get ground on this thing, really. Can I get it under there? Oh my god, it looks worse there than on the TV. What on God's earth is that? I'd say that is. That's got to be the earth isn't connected. Surely. If I disconnect the earth here, now it's the same. That's better. Yeah. Can't even make a good connection this thing. How do I do it? It's floating around there. That's just a degaussing connection. That should be ground, I would assume. Where's the output wires? Oh, yeah, this is it. I'm on it. Where's the input capacitor? That one. That's got a heap of ripple on it. 
can't possibly be any good, can it? Because what we get on the output through that resistor would have to be from that. I need to dig another cap across that. Seems to measure okay, but maybe I'm measuring something else. 4700 at 25. Okay, I'm try and hold it across the... Oh, that's definitely charging it up. But I can't really connect. God almighty. That improves it. But doesn't get rid of it. What? Unless we've got a leaky diode, I think can cause issues. I think a leaky diode in the bridge rectifier is another thing, but God, surely they haven't failed. Point four. Point four. Point four. Point four. Point four. Still looks rubbish. Might just turn this voltage down in case that does have any effect on things. Because it did seem to vary a bit last time I think when I turned it down, but it you turn it down to 12 volts and it shoots back up again. So we may have a dicky transistor, but everything on static test measures fine. You know, up around 14 volts, which is not great. Ooh. Yeah, the EHT doing weird stuff. It just jumps. I wonder if this pot's dicky as well. Between 10. Ah! Okay, so the pitch is fine at 10 volts. Are oh, you kidding me? So it's actually an over voltage thing. That didn't lift it at all, even though I turned the pot a bit. Oh yeah, that pot's dicky, I think. Yeah, it plays up at 13 volts, or 13.7. And, and I turned it goes down, comes back up, and then 10 volts. It's clear at 10 volts. Oh, you're kidding me. I thought I tried that before. I don't think that pot's much good. I wouldn't have thought you'd get ripply weird stuff. What's happening at a higher voltage? Why was a ripple all through the power supply? Well, that's a new one. So it doesn't look the best. And it is a 6, 8, no, 4K7. Hopefully I've got one in the same package, but I've got a few of those little round white ones. So some have got the pins the other way. 4.7k. Only took me about 10 to find one, but that's not too bad. So it seems to be a lot of dodgy trim bots. Which makes sense of why it was fine and then it suddenly jumped up in voltage. Just resolder that transistor too, just to make sure. Still a bit weird, but... And we have 12.4. Well, we couldn't get 12.4 before, and that's fine. 12.3, 2, 1... Yep, down into the 11s. Yeah, as soon as you get over about 13 and a half. We get a bad dose of the ripples. I'm not sure I can really show that, but... Let's get rid of that lead. Oh, actually I need a lead, don't I? Can't hook that on the socket or something. Probably can. Yeah. 
doesn't really matter to demonstrate it, I guess. Okay, there's our image. I'll start turning it up. Picture gets a bit wider, and then we get this ripple and that rubbish. Vertical, all sorts of stuff. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But we'll get that back down. Twelve and a half at the moment. Put it right back on twelve, I think it's the best. But at least this trim pot works nicely now. I can adjust it. Before it was jumping from eleven up to thirteen and a half or something. That I can probably almost get it perfect. Look at that. So that is another dud trim pot. Oh god, I hope that's the last I have to see of this thing. Would too much current draw cause some sort of river in it, maybe. Or has it still got the same amount of ripple? Now it's clean as. Not a thing. That's what I would have thought. So why on earth? Not quite sure what's going on there. No idea. Really weird to get a massive increase in ripple when the voltage goes up, and the voltage, well, look at the voltage out of the transformer, looked to be fine still. Because that was one of my th theories, it might have been too much power being drawn and dropping things down. No, no idea. But anyway, we'll get back onto this and have a look at the AWA, see so if we can sort out the AV board on that. I think from memory it had the switches and sockets and the rest of it was unpopulated, I think. I don't really care about this stuff to do with the IF out. But it would be good. I thought the other one had some transistors and stuff on it, but I could be wrong. It would be good. But guess what I need to do? If we can get the AV ins working. I mean, these boards may still be different yet. Yeah? Or some other ruby. I'm sure it had something about transistors. Maybe that's just my memory's wrong. I don't think so. Get that out of the way. Hmm, someone's been repairing stuff on this board and then take the plastic cover off the board. So it may well have a different board than the other one, or my memory's faulty. Oh no, there is it. There is, there is a transistor on this. I'm hoping it's just the one. Oh no, there's another one maybe. No, there are a couple of transistors. No, my memory was correct. So it's only two of them, which is about right. Oh, there's about four screws in here, are there? Oh, yeah, there's another one on that corner and one here. If that's got the same board, we can just fit the parts needed. I mean, if in theory, you could fit the whole lot. And possibly convert that TV to the same functionality as this one. There we have it. So there's a transistor, transistor. They probably see it. Yeah, well, that's a C1815. They usually are. And what's this one? It's probably another one. Get that cap out of the way. I can't see. It's got a heap of um, contact cleaner all over it, which doesn't help. And that's an A1015, the complementary of the C18. C, yeah, A1015, isn't it? Yeah. This one's PMP, one's NPN. This was probably what I should have done with the other one. And I can clean these sockets off while I got them out, even though they are, I think they're actually rusted. They're that poor quality, whatever they're made out of. They're either heavily corroded or actually starting to rust a bit. I think it's more just here, the coating's corroded. 
that's got some goo on it that's got some brown stuff on it or black stuff so we'll clean them while we're at it but all the parts are on here maybe I should just get a photo or something and get a record of what's actually on this board what happened to that resistor it's got some glue on it I think so that might be a better thing to actually list it all there's a 220 mic cap there's a couple other small caps 220 again and a 10 mic yeah so we'll do that in another one here which is a probably another 10 not 33 so we'll get onto that and see what we can do with the AWA if I can at least make that run with an external power supply and AV inputs that'll make that a useful TV I wouldn't mind get a few of these going for a bit of a display so might as well get that going even if I have to rig up some sort of power supply to it or even use my bench supply I might even just yeah, make sure there's some wires out the back to hook to it we'll go from there okay just I was thinking about the problem this TV had with the voltage being too high and all the ripple I thought what happens if I crank the voltage up on an external power supply I assume that won't go into ripple mode and so the TV should be fine but I want to find out for sure I can look at the voltage on the meters here can I I guess I should still measure it to be completely sure that I am got the right voltage and I'm not just relying on the meter on the power supply we have 12.96 volts so already a little on the high side oh, I'm not doing it in the TV am I let's just turn that up a bit yeah up past we probably shouldn't go that high don't want to go to 15 volts but if we go yeah, up to what I was going to check is does the current go up it does slightly go up so we're at 13 8 volts we've got one and a half amps 12 volts we've only gone down about 100 milliamps according to the meter on the power supply and that's what I would expect so how can that is that something in that power supply hitting a brick wall very weird that it goes so ripply just with a little bit more current on it I don't really want to pull the other TV apart to find out if that power supply behaves the same or not but it's rather weird if we're talking only about 100 milliamps or so you would think the voltage would drop well if it's pulling more current than the thing's capable of you don't get ripple you just get a voltage drop sort of thing so that is rather weird. I'm not sure what phenomena we're looking at there. Alrighty, and in fact it had the ripple on the filter cap on the primary as well. Although, oh yeah, they're 3 amp diodes, so they should handle that no problem. Dunno. That is a bit of a weird one. It's a problem with electronics. You're always finding new phenomena in these faulty things that you've never seen before. That sort of when you go outside the normal engineering specifications of what they're meant to do, they start doing weird things. But yeah, that's rather odd. Don't think I've ever seen one sort of go all ripply and weird like that when you put a load on it or a higher voltage output on it. When I mean, it's just a regulated power supply, you should be able to tweak it up to whatever voltage and it doesn't really care. So it makes me wonder if they're really running that thing very close to what it can handle but I don't know what happens to a transformer it should just get hotter and maybe the voltage drops or something if you pull too much current but in this case we're sort of turning up the voltage which is, again is making more current flow not much but it's like something hits the limits of what it can do but why that would cause a ripple pattern I don't know but it is a day woo, so you expect weird things like that to happen. And I've seen a few noisy power supplies and stuff over the years, but that is certainly one of the weirder ones.